Welcome to Training Without Conflict podcast number eight. Tonight's guest is a very good friend of mine, Marcus Noitz. Uh, we've been man, long time friends, very long time. Probably we shouldn't even Django. go there. Django. Django in Crazy. Germany. Crazy. I remember, um, man, you know what I remember? Like probably the, one of the very first times. Where was it? With Seppi. It was the same in the right. I yeah. did the translation. <laughs> yes. I'm like, <laughs> damn, Marcus speaks like, I mean, it was so easy to do that thing because, you know, you know dogs and then you know English. It was like, wow, this is beautiful. Um, but yes, um, Marcus, tell tell just a little bit about, I mean, not a little bit, go on as long as you want. There is <laughs> okay. a lot to say about yeah, yourself. So, um, you know, from, from anywhere you want to start, um, how did it all start for you? Okay, so yeah. my dog career started you know, very early in Germany. I think I was about 10, 11, 12 years old. And we have this culture in Germany with the clubs and the clubhouses, like little restaurants. And yeah. this is how it started because my father met his friends every Sunday morning. You know, he had never anything to do with dogs. So they met at this little restaurant. And this is like a German tradition Sunday morning, or at this time, or the people met and have some beer or whatever, and then go home, have lunch, yeah. and that's it for the Sunday. And so this was my first contact with dog sport, and I. So, but your dad was doing anything dogs? No, nothing. No, this, this was just this restaurant. Gotcha. You know, the place to the go place to. to go, and they met there, him and his colleagues, and I don't know why they even did it because this was outside, and but they met there. So, this was my first thing. So I want to have a dog, by my, but my parents did not allow me at this time. So I start training dogs from other people. Mm -hmm. so, I don't know, 12 years. So I, I told the story many <laughs> times. Like, uh, I mean, I had to ride my bicycle. So I drove, the first dog was a dog from a farmer. You know, he was a chain dog in Germany. He looked like a German Shepherd, but probably it was a mix, collie mix, Some, whatever. Yeah. So I drove with my bicycle. It was about, yeah five miles to go there, take the dog away from the train and go in the field and train. And so it started in a, at this time, a regional, local, very successful club. You know, we had this big culture there. You know, I always said when we had club trials, we had tw 20 shoots on dogs, wow. for sure. And we had more, so we had not to cancel a few of them because at this time there was the limit, 20 dogs a day. So. We had more than 20 dogs in our club, trained, titled. We had five, six different decoys. Yeah. So that's when I was starting as a decoy. You know, people, you were sitting out at the bench, like in a soccer game and waiting. The, the training director tells you, you can go in, you know. So you were ha you were like, very happy, you know. Like the golden age of dog sports, probably, really. Not for the dogs, but for us. Not for know? the dogs, true. Yeah. So, and so how it, so it started, so I had different dogs to train from other people and then at the end I got my first own dog, German Shepherd. I choose a litter but there was not were not enough males, so I take another one. Yeah. And the problem was this dog did not bite at all, so I go back and then mm. it started. Different dogs. And what then were what were the dogs at that time? What were the kind of the popular breeds people would have? What's I it mean still mainly mainly German Shepherds. Still German Shepherds, yes. right? I mean, this was 1986, 1985. Yeah. And then, I mean, this was the time when the first Malinois showed up maybe three, four years later. Right, right, I right. Think. You know what's interesting? How how was, because um, obviously I, at that time, I was on the other side of the Berlin Wall. So I all I knew was the East German, German Shepherds and some of the Russian, which they call them the, um, oh, I can't even think of the name. Some, some like a um, Northeast uh, Shepherd dog or something. Mm -hmm. um, but how, 
like when 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 the countries was split at that time and you were already training yeah. so there was like what did you know about the dogs in each germany for yeah. example very little yeah i mean this was a, a little bit disappointed thing for us you know because when the border opened so many german shepherd owners said oh now we have you know this super east bloodline german shepherds mm -hmm. and at the end i think the most of them disappointed in sport so when i i mean i'm still not the german shepherd guy anymore but i'm still good in bloodlines yeah and i don't think there is maybe there's one famous lord gleisterek this is this line who still you you can still find now in, in actual working dog lines but i think the most disappeared the dogs were just a little bit different so but they probably was it only the the type of dogs or was it also i mean the training must be different too i remember from because i i started with totally like east european style of military training yeah. you know and and then when i moved to belgium i started to get a little bit of the feel of and i'm sure at that time everywhere training started to get better and better but still you 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 were way way more tradition and way more advanced compared I, I, to east germany actually, i really don't know much about the former east german dog training mm. tradition i know some handlers i know handlers they escaped before you know and when, right and there were some good dog trainers and i know trainers now who who already or already trained in this time now I don't think there was so much difference. It was it was a different system, but yeah, maybe the population was too close for this breed mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the east part. Like, maybe like what my breed I have now. I have now a giant now. So I mean, they they came out out of this DDR East German bloodlines. On you know, mm. so so my breeder from my dog from Hatzbachtal is a very famous giant now. So breeder. He told me a little bit about how he started again. The Schnauzer in the West German part were totally down. They were just show dogs at show the end. Dogs. And he started to yeah, kind of smuggle dogs out of the East German part, breeding dogs. And this is how he started his worldwide famous Schnauzer breeding program. Hmm. And I think we, we earned a lot with the Schnauzers and for sure in the first years we earned a lot with the Erdale Terriers because they were Erdale Terrier. There yes. were a lot of them on the big competition you saw and they were really strong and nasty dogs. And I'm not 100% sure, but I think with the German Shepherds, we had no profit of them. You know, it's like, yeah, they are almost. Very interesting this, because on the other side, like looking back from Eastern Europe, we would always be like, wow, the the West type of shepherd. And and the moment it opened, the borders, I think everybody, like, I wish they kept some of the, the lines mm. just because it's a, I mean, not keep them isolated, but make some breedings, but still maintain some type. And I think they, like East Germans, just totally went, and and to completely the yeah. to, took the West, and because it was the cool thing to do, and yeah. maybe they were the better dogs. I don't. I really don't know at that. Maybe moment. it was just a big desire, you know. Like I mean, it's not not a the joke. They had this car, this Trabant, and now yes. they can buy a, a Mercedes or BMW. Yes. Maybe this was the problem that they said, okay, now I have the chance to buy what I want. Right, right, right. But yeah, that's what happened. What about the Rottweilers? I mean, they were. They were uh, at least I know when I went to Belgium and and then very early on in the States. There were some, I mean, there were some good Rottweilers, not, yeah, I mean, there's some exceptions, right, always, but, uh, but there was a community that was into working Rottweilers and, and somehow that also. So what I see f from my point of view, you know, it's like I was in Rottweilers, not personal but with my friend and my helper he was a good breeder of good rottweilers and at this time but this is now 15 years back 10 years back at least more 
But I think what they do now in Germany or in maybe in whole Europe, they almost follow for me the way of the German Shepherds. Because the Rottweiler I remember, but I was never very deep in, the, you know, there were, there were litters, there was one champion of show and one champion of work in the same litter. Mm. You know, not not champion, of but course, you know. Of course, of course. And, but, and, and so, like my friend, he had this Rottweiler kennel and he had, his, his starting female was more out of, what I think, out more of, out of the working type, small female, but she produced at least two or three um, club seeker winners. So, you know, this is the, the highest show level for yeah. the Rottweilers. And on the other side, in the leaders always were some very good dogs you can use for sport. So the same litter both right, types right, was right. possible. And now I what I see, what I think, I'm not sure if it's right, I think they switch and separate a little bit more. You know, the one type just for the show exhibition, they do their trials. And there are some kennels in Germany I know. They do a lot of advertisement for their working Rottweilers. But they yeah, they don't for me they don't don't even look like a Rottweiler anymore, you know. They are a little bit smaller. They for sure they have good speed and all that, but they are not the breed what I know. And I think I'm not sure, but I think they separate this you know, in these two lines mm -hmm. year by year. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a problem for the breed, for me, for for the working dog or police dog breed at all, that the separation of, of things, you know. Yeah, so since we mentioned police, how how did that, how did you end up deciding to, to go there? And, and was it straight dog thing or was it? Oh, no, it was <laughs> actually I did a not process. <laughs> after I finished school, I did not know what to do. So I started with the army. And then after army, I still was not sure what to do. And I think, okay, police, because from the first day they pay you good money, so, ah, yes. that's maybe the job to do. But then when I when I decided to join police, I was sure I wanted to go to the K9 unit. So after we have this different system, we have the two, two and a half years education mm -hmm. for police. And then I went out on a normal police station and after my minimum time I have to stay there. I I start to apply for K9 and then very fast, very easy. I, I went to the K9 unit. Is that a, I mean, how is the K9 considered as far as, like I know in the States, the to be in the K9 unit is people kind of like to, to, to join the units. I mean, you have to have some passion for dogs, of course, otherwise there is no way. I mean, for like. sure you don't go to the K9 if you don't like dogs. Right. I mean, I mean, it changed like in dog training. The passion for training is probably not so high anymore. The passion for dogs is still there. Mm -hmm. You know, people, the, the, the training side, like like when I started, and we have we had still this 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 competition, the international German police championship, which was together with the German Shepherd Nationals. Yes. Yeah, we, we even did here in the States in the yes. in the nineties. And, and it was very big in Germany. So we had on the one side we had a hundred Schutzhund at this time dogs for the German national championship. On the other side we had eighty, ninety, hundred police wow. dogs. So this this and it was called international, so there were also people from US yes. taking part in and so it was at this time I, I think a very interesting thing. The protection was different. There were total different exercises. Police had three helpers. You had the long, no, not the attack on on the front, the long long escape yeah. and all this stuff. The long hold and bark. And there was a bite on a full body suit. No, one. no, two sleeves. No. Two sleeves mm. was always two sleeves. But it was an interesting protection. So at this time in this national championship, there was the obedience field were around somewhere. And in the main field, which, which was usually a professional soccer stadium, mm -hmm. there was protection all the day long. So there were six dogs police, six dogs Schutzhund, yep. six dogs police. So it was nice to watch. And at this time, like I'm sure 50% of police officers did dog sport private. They were in a club, you know, they trained the dogs private. 
And right now, when I watch in my department, I'm working right now, we have 45, 45 police officers with dogs, and there are two in a dog training club at all. Mm -hmm. So this changed. And then, and I think the first step was that the different governments from the different states, police is a state thing in in Germany, decided it's too expensive to send these police officers to this national championship. Because when I was there, no matter as a handler or as a helper or track layer, it, this was work time. Yeah, I get paid for it, you know. Yes, of course. And so mm. at this time, the financial situation in Germany was maybe not the best. So the government tried, where can I save money? And they really easily found out, okay, it's easy to save money with the K9 units, just let them don't do their sports anymore. And 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 from this time the training level get a little bit I I will not say worse, but different. Mm. There were many dogs doing both sport and, and patrol or police work and, and now it's almost gone. So Back to the so when when you did like let's say a couple of years or whatever as a uh, just an officer without the dog then what what's the process from there was there a school or yeah. like how do you go about so I was becoming canine okay I take my I got my first canine dog I bought him private I went to oh. so this was for me the decision until now I had German shepherds and I had also Dobermans beside yeah and and then the Malinois came up. Like yeah, Manfred Motz is famous. The, he was a what was his name? Dupotwatok. He was one of the first on the national champion. Do and the, like this year, the DVG at this time it was the DHV. Mm -hmm. And then the Americans came. The, the training group from Gottfried Dildai. Yes, I think Igor from Löwenfels was yes. the name, and all yes. you know. So all this Malinois came up and more. That's and, and funny. I actually have. Igor in somewhere back in my yeah. mind still. So, okay, I said, okay, my next dog will be a Malinois. And then it was clear I I can go to the K9 unit. So I thought, okay, I buy me a dog. No, oh, cool. I mean, that's nice, actually, that you actually have yeah. the opportunity to... Yes. It, and so I called Peter Engel, breeder of Löwenfels, yeah. and asked him if he can get me a dog, you know, so I said, yeah. So, so I what did you have at the moment at that time? What, a Doberman German Shepherd. Shepherd. Shepherd? I quit with Doberman. The last Doberman I had, he had um, dysplasia at the hips. Mm -hmm. So I made, I titled him, I think, to two, but I thought, okay, it's not, you know, I cannot train a dog which is ill, so I gave him as a pet dog to a yeah. friend. And yeah. Then yeah, 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 yeah. So And then I, I went to the Netherlands and with Peter Engel and the first talk I get was a, you know, now they call them Dutchy X Mechela. It was a yes. Malina with stripes. Yes. And he was good, but he felt wet. So X-ray was not good. I mm. took him back and then, yes, I got a mix. He lo he had the color of a, almost like a Doman Rottweiler and the body of Malinois. He was PH1 titled. With very low points, no out, no barking, nothing. Of you know? course. <laughs> and and the Netherlands showed me <laughs> the, the crazy training they did at this time. And it, I have to train like this and the dog is dangerous. Yeah, okay. I take him. So I take him and trained him from the first day for Schutzhund. And and then after three months, I went, I was K9 handler then. So the, the government took him over. They paid me. And I make my canine courses, and and at, at the side I trained him for Schutzhund, and then, and I made I, I I brought him to the nationals one year later. Nice. So I from nothing I do the police dog stuff. Right. And at this time it was good because when you did this police dog trial for the work, this was like a Schutzhund 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 two trial. So I skipped. Oh, so you can actually I go skipped to one them. BH, one, two and start with three. So I made my first three and then, then I made the regionals or I start with the, the local regional, then a the big regional and then the nationals. So could uh, could this get reversed? Could like uh, uh, somebody that's not 
in the police, like a civil, mm-hmm. have a dog and go and get a police title or no, 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 no. no. but you can go the other way. Yes. Okay. This was, there was a time there was, that there was it in the rule book, in the Schutz und rule book, rule mm-hmm. book. And then they take it out, but like my next dog, my next police dog I had, I did the same, even it it was not, it was not the rule book anymore, but nobody cared about, you know. Right. It was, at this time, it was, it was from the German Shepherd Club. They had this system where you get these medals, you know, you yes. make an IG, yeah. uh, Schutzhund 1, you get a medal, you make, they had like, you know, a walk, a trail, 20 kilometers, you get another medal. This was very fancy and famous at this I time. I think this still is a... Uh, um uh, it, maybe it not happens. so much like it happens no. and and so they said okay the the so we we had the dpo1 and the dpo2 and the dpo and the the wpo this was and so what is the dpo stand for what do you um dpo means deutsche polizeiordnung this means german police working work, whatever yeah. yeah and so they said the dpo1 is like the schutzhund one the dpo2 is like the schutzhund two and the wpo is like the schutzhund three this is how they compare gotcha. it. Gotcha. Yeah, I think this is what was like in the States. I think it was the double, the, the last one, double WPO. WPO. This yeah. was the, the. So that um, was the highest level, I guess, or something. W means Wettkampf and Wettkampf means competition. This was the level from the international championships okay. and all. This was just a competition qualification or competition trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The DPO one you need for to go with a dog on the street. And so from there, what? You 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 got into the unit, but now you are, I mean, now, yeah. what, so, uh, what, now, now, now you're in a completely different position, so yeah. we're gonna get there, but. I worked me. on the street with this dog, but just for one and a half year. I trained him mm. for patrol and narcotics work. And then we have this system in Germany, we have a police dog school. It's also all police officers, so I go there. And then my job was just to train police dogs. So it's from Monday to Friday, police dogs, police dogs, police dogs, like training courses, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, all the different stuff. Patrol work, narcotics, explosive detection, cadaver, oh, all wow. this stuff. And this is what I did then, I don't know, maybe 10 or 12 years, just train these dogs. I had a police dog. dogs or also the handlers? Dogs and handlers, and the always handlers. the teams. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to patrol work again. And and then I did a few years patrol work with two different dogs. And then my the chief of my department at this time asked me if I don't want to do... We never had this before, like a head trainer for the department I'm in. And that's what I do right now. I'm head trainer for my department. We have this 45 dogs I said at the beginning yeah. and I, I buy the new dogs for the beginners or the new dogs for handlers they are already there I prepare them I train them then out of my department they go to this police dog school and make their courses what they need for going on the street a certification mm-hmm. they come back and then we go on in training with them that's my job I do right that's now that's pretty cool and as a side job, I have my police dog, and it's still, I have still a police dog, but now it's a Jack Russell. Yes. Uh, and because I have no patrol work to do, I just need a detection dog, so I took a Jack Russell because my wife, Maria, she likes to breed, so I said, okay, it's easy, take a small dog. Yeah, I'm but sure we're going to show some on the podcast we're gonna pull out some yes because it's amazing what the little thing does it's, it's, it's now amazing. i trained her as a as an arson dog so yeah 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 that's how you said that you do select the dogs where do you go how do you select the dogs for the for the department or or how what what that do you travel around europe or is it mostly mm. breeders or any option you think of i mean because I'm still in the sport and training, sometimes people okay. just offer me a dog, you know, which is not good enough for them, but... Oh, but these are probably 
some fine for, dogs yes, for, for what me, you need. I, I really prefer to buy dogs like this yeah. because if not, we have to go to the dealers and yes. the German police does not pay good money. So we get third or fourth choice and we really the most That's dogs so funny that you say because I I feel like everybody gets the third and fourth choice. I don't or maybe they just don't get good dogs the dealers. There are some But, yeah. I mean, I mean out of 50 if you have one or two or three good ones that's yeah. not Yeah, probably, but I mean a good dog the dealers they will not pay good money. A good dog will ever cost good money, you know, but Right. So And probably <laughs> what I think is happening Even the dealers, when they get your hands on a really good dog, they end up selling it to somebody in sport because they pay end up paying yeah. more money, especially but, like in the states or something. Yeah. But but right now, you know, when I started, when I bought my dog, he was this PH1 titled, the KNPV stuff. Mm. I paid I don't know. At this time, for sure, no three thousand marks at this time. Less for sure. I don't know. And now the Netherlands, which is a big market for police dogs, I'm sure you cannot buy a police dog for less than a uh, PH1 dog, titled dog, less than six, seven thousand euro. 100% not. Yeah, they I, sell a yeah, lot. Yeah, for sure. You know. No, no. So, and, and the German police pays maximum 2,500, maybe 3,000 euro. And now it, there is a brand new market. Like the Netherlands was a very big market. Mm -hmm. And then But I always prefer, I, I did never prefer the Netherlands dogs. They are, we had too much problems with them in, in several things I prefer. I bought many dogs from a good friend from the German Malina Club, from Volker. He imported nice French ring dogs with French good dogs. foundation, easy to handle, easy for beginners. But even this is not possible anymore. What What we really have to buy now is There is a big market, I think, in, in the former Czechoslovakia, so Czech Republic yes. and Slovakia. And they are not breeders like we are breeders or you are breeder with, with pedigree. They just breed for police, you know, they breed with whatever, German Shepherd, Malinois and mix. And and what's good enough, they prepare a little bit and then they yeah. sell it to police. You know, from what I'm thinking, I we should not support this by... Because if you see these dogs, you see, okay, some of them, they really, they don't know their name. You know, you see they never have social contact with humans. That's right. So it's for Just sure not the rushed. best start in the life the dogs had. But we have no other chance. If we, you know, like now, like when I come back from here, when I have to go back to work, first of March, we get six new dog handlers. So I have to buy the next three, four weeks, six dogs. That's not so easy. Right. So at the end, I have to go to these dealers. So when you go, what do you look? What is like, like, no, like top three priorities when you look at the dog and you think of your people in going back to the department? Top one is I look the handle. <laughs> you know that's. <laughs> <laughs> you know? What what kind of dog can work yeah. with you? <laughs> yes, and then top two, and that's not the the best thing, but. I buy a dog if I think the handler can handle it. Right. And so what I try so, to... So then then you already have the handlers in mind when you go to select... The handlers come to our station, to our department, and they are already there. You know, before okay. they, they don't come and have the dog at the first day. They okay. come and they... Usually they have interest. Maybe they come a few months before and do like a hospitation and yeah. watch. And so you get them know. And then you, it's so different now. So in the city I work is Stuttgart. It's a, for Germany. It's a bigger city. The rents are crazy high in this area. So it's not easy to get an apartment where dogs are allowed, you know, so it starts mm -hmm, like this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I started, the most people, they had a house and they had a garden, so it was easy for them. But now we have people, we had one officer, he lived in the 16th floor of an apartment building. He wants to be a dog handler, you know, 
And I told him this might be difficult for you, but, but you know, he was, okay, I will do, I will do. And he stopped after one day he had a dog. So, yes, so that's I really have to check our handlers. And then what I really try to find is... Is there an option also to keep the dogs in at the department or they go home if all, all dogs go home? No, there's no option. They have to go home. That's actually... Very that's cool. Good, yeah. you know, I mean, that's good, yeah. I mean, it's not cool. good for a dog to stay in a kennel yes. building and just take them out for work. Yes. So this changed a lot. You know, now we have to find dogs who are able to live in a flat, who, you know... To Makes, yeah. I don't know, go with a train to work, whatever. So that's changed a lot. Yeah, that makes it harder. Like normally you would think, oh yeah, this dog is super mean he's gonna tag anybody that walks behind or whatever but then he doesn't go home he stays in a kennel and then they pick him up they put him in a car hopefully the door doesn't automatically open oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's not the best way for so sure but that makes it hard to select yeah, dogs so then my first handlers i always tell them you know i try to find the dog which is good for you and if we have luck, it will be a decent police dog. But maybe it will be not. You know, but the first thing is what I have to look for is that you can handle him. And and you have no experience, so this is the main topic. You know, you you, you have to be able to handle a dog. Right. I think we still have some good dogs. So what I think, if we have motivated dog handlers, you know, they want the dogs will do the job at the end too. If you are lazy, the dog will be lazy. If you are afraid of any strange situation, your dog will be afraid. That's how it is. So we have, compared to the sport people, sometimes we buy out of the sport side or breeding side, very low quality, but at the end they do their job. What would be the the oldest you would take to buy? Yeah, I always prefer to buy very young dogs. It makes it easier. They have not so like bad young, like under I a start year with six or months, yes. Oh I start yeah, with six months. Yes. So I look and I I never had to give a dog back, which I bought in this age because it did not develop very well. So I think I have. Good. The good yeah, eye yeah, for yeah. this, you know. Yeah. And the maximum age is three years, but in our system, we have in the police, if I buy a dog, it, it will take him at least one and a half years until he's finished. Not because of the time he has to spend for the course, but we have a system you have to check in and there must be a course at this time, you know. Right. It makes it very difficult, the system. Oh, but that's also very good. I mean, there's so many good things about getting a dog or a young dog young versus dog. an older dog yeah. because you're allow it to develop the way you want yeah. it doesn't come some a dog that doesn't know nothing and just sees a ball and loses its mind and then you have to chalk him out to let go yeah. you can actually do so much yes, yes but it takes more time of course it takes more time but at the end the end is, the result result is, is for sure yeah. what you want or what you can make i guess we had the time we bought puppies but now our department does not want maybe it changes now we will see but we had really good experience with puppies mm. so and one of the best experience for me because at this time I did also the SWAT dog training. Mm -hmm. I was in charge for this over many years and one of my friends, a private also friend, he had his first SWAT dog. It was an older dog from Belgium Ring and we became bloodlines, very good, solid dog. And then for the next dog we said, ah, we, we buy a puppy. And it took a puppy out of one of my litters, or not my litter, but my kennel name. Yeah, My, pol my police dog was the father. We took that puppy and from the first day we just prepared him for the SWAT job. And he was the easiest dog in all real operations we ever had. And he bites very strong. <laughs> he for sure had one of the most bites for SWAT dog in Germany at all. And he the first the first bite he did his job. 
and it's a it's not a funny story it's a story about because in the first bite my wife she came from a town one and a half hour away from where we live now uh -huh. and and this operation wa was in this little town and this dog bites the guy in the leg and all this thing is on video and you but you don't see the re the, the action itself and then you hear just a noise from a dog and then the video at the end is on the guy and the dog is on the leg and this you know all these things and then they take the guy down the dog is still in the leg handler puts him away and then you see from a sudden on the video like blood is like this coming out Oof. and then it's like the, you hear the handler my dog is is injured hurt I, you know oh and then shit. you see blood all over when he took him out and this guy cut the you know the trout yes to 90 percent where the breeze he cut it when oh. the dog bit him you so after the noise was when he cut but the dog stayed in the leg and fight you know and he's and and then they bring him with the lights to the wet in this little town and he saved his life he, he cut all you know and 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 there's a picture of this dog in this wet and when i met my, my wife maria she told me about this picture because this is her wet you know <laughs> so that's a funny story at Man, the end of the world how crazy how crazy like like how far a human a dog anybody can go when the yeah. genetics are right you yes know? yes he did his job and I, wow. I mean i never get cut by a knife but people say this is one of the worst pains you can have right it's worse than getting shot the dog did his job it did not even bleed you know and then when all was finished it starts i think the adrenaline was so high and this was the first real bite of this dog you never had experience before so and this dog was so easy he was always quiet he was in the team you know you I mean, we put a lot of obedience on him. You could make a long down for one hour. You know, he was like, okay. Just a good because boy. <laughs> he never barked because we told him, uh, we taught him from the beginning because that's in our SWAT tactic, no barking. No bark. So we taught him barking is not necessary for you. You know, it was perfect. How much muscle work do you do with this you dog? Prepare? This dog had for sure not more than 10, 10, 15 bite experience in his life before this bite. I mean bite experience right. on the suit or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So we did at the beginning, I showed him, uh, but I showed it eight, nine months old, I showed him, okay, there are different options for you to bite, legs, yeah. inner yeah. arms, whatever. And then we did a lot of, when he had the age, a lot of, aggression work you know save him with two leashes just stop him a few inches before the 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 decoy without Contact. equipment yeah. hold him yeah and then we did 90 percent muscle just muscle and and this was also you see the dog was never fast in his life mm -hmm. because we never trained him on brain Entry. he was walking slow in this thing you know like okay where is it and then he goes <laughs> And then boom, you know. <laughs> but so when maybe, you maybe it was an ex exception, you know. But it was at the end, it was a super nice stock and did the job. And if you did muscle, what? Uh, I mean, there is so many different, not that many, but there is at least uh, two, three different uh, school of thought as far as uh, using muscle, boxing, or was teaching him to bite, having a bar in the muscle, not having uh, a bar, like. I don't train a special technique. I think out of my experience, a dog who hits like in Belgium ring, hits and go back, he will not bite in this situation. Probably. He's so used to hitting and go yes. back. Yes. Yes, it's a it's a it's like it's a sport. It's catching a prey, boom, and go back. Exactly. It's like the doing some martial arts without contact. Yeah. It's so much ingrained that that's what yeah. you do that you cannot really apply it so in practice what i'm looking for i never think about how hard the dog hits what i do we do this aggression stuff and then on the one side on the other side we use it we make him um, comfortable with the muscle mm -hmm. and then we bring both pieces together so my first 10 muscle works 
the dog has no contact with the person. I, I, I make this the system, okay, I have two leashes on, I want to be aggressive, but this time you have the muscle on. And he should show the same behavior like without muscle, like, yeah. okay, yeah. come on, yeah. I kill you. And if this is good, I just let him go. And I expect from a dog that he's just stay with the muscle at the person. Right, trying somehow trying to, to somehow, figure it out. And even yes. if they start with the legs, they, they, they want, yes. I think if, if they want to keep this person, then yeah. they bite. I mean, they, the most dogs use the legs because they are, you know, they have the muscle on. Right. But they really try to keep this. So that's what I think. If they have the chance, they will try to keep this guy with the, with the mouse and not with the legs at this time. That's what my theory or my thinking about it. I also think in a, in a muscle training that some 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 people believe that they can do some magic and change a dog but for the most part a dog when when you've trained few dogs to do that and do civil bites you know if that dog will or will yes, not yes, bite right yes. it's not a yes a muscle i mean you cannot you it's there's no magic Yeah, with the no, muscle that can create something that's no. not there you can create try to create aggression in 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 frustration. somehow frustration right yes but not it's not okay my my dog hits with a muscle now we will be right ready to go that's not the thing like we had this with the, the officer who had the, the puppy his dog before from NVBK bloodlines he had another handler before the dog was really A super nice dog. Mm -hmm. I bought him also from Volker Riedel, NVBK, big head, nice. He hits like crazy. You know, I, I know exactly because I had the this, this suit on, on, on the test and, and Volker was laughing at me and said, yeah, we make a long bite. And I was, whoom, I was, you know, he was, <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> and, uh, and, but social and clear in the head and all. And then at, this was the first time You know, we change our training a little bit. I said, ah, we have to go more on the muscle. And this dog was pre-trained with the muscle for the ring. Mm -hmm. And and we were blind on this eye because all we did, the dog was crazy with the muscle. He hits you like, yes. and he's like, oh, okay. So we were sure, boom, this dog will bite. And then he bites out of an accident in the training situation. Real, with no equipment. This was so... And he, did, he made his job, you know, he bites. He a, did his thing. A yeah. police officer, no out, so it was really, and I said, well, okay, this dog will bite, for sure. Hmm. The first operation, no bite. Then we said, hmm, strange, you know, we, I was, right. Huh? Right. and then we tried to figure out what happened, and then we did the same, we, we tried to make the same picture of how it was. So it was, the guy was just sitting on the couch, he was a little bit stupid, he had a gun in front of him, And they sent the dog, and then you just hear, oh, where's the puppy, where's the puppy? And the dog was running around. Okay. So we prepared, we take a metal cage, like this metal crate for dogs, a bigger one we had. Mm -hmm. The dog did not know, so I, s I went in, and I was sitting still like this, and he sent the dog, and I start talking. He, he, he ignored me. Okay, so, okay, that's maybe the problem. Interesting, yeah. The next situation, we did with the muscle, the same. He come and run in that cage, boom, like crazy. I don't, I'm not sure what's now. So we took the muscle off. We go back after one hour, same situation. I talked. He ignored me, <laughs> you know. So he was so focused on the muscle. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was like I could wear a sleeve. So that's what what was the problem and we were so blind in this side we said ah oh, this dog is crazy with muscle so what we do the dog was in the car in the in the patrol car okay now muscle time muscle out on and attack boom and this was the biggest mistake the dog was the dog was for the dog was the muscle the signal there is something exactly it wasn't that the dog didn't have the courage or whatever uh, no, it, no, was it was just yes. the the context of the uh, yes yeah. And and this was the first time I think, hmm. So then we started to make him used to the muscle in all life situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we changed his life in a bad way at this time. Because, I mean, he was supposed to bite. 
And he did really good because he was mentally, he was super strong. He was a very friendly, brave dog, but he was very strong and we changed him really. So he had four weeks stress. At the end, he did super real bites and was still a good mentally stable Now dog. the, man, I mean, from what I know, as we said, Malinois kind of, they crept in all the countries and started to get really, I mean, at least what I'm, what I'm thinking, 89, 90, 93, and yes. they really started to kind of be like, wow, okay, everybody seemed to, not that everybody wanted one, but everybody started to get Think curious and them. pay attention, yeah. right? And in in Germany, how how did that all happen? I mean, we know Lovenfels, we know Volkel. I mean, who? I mean, I know you were mm. instrumental in the whole DMC thing, yeah. but give me a little bit of that history. It's always interesting to. Okay, I came a little bit later. So the first was Peter Engel, Löwenfels breeder, and then Volker Riedel, Anke Höpkens, Erbert Hannover breeder. Ah, yeah. So they were pretty the first. Edgar was there very early, Edgar Schergel. And, mm -hmm. and I think, I mean, they, like, for sure, Peter and, and Volker Riedel, they spent a lot of money and a lot of time to, to, You know, bring this breed to the level in Germany they are, or they was at a few years ago. So they right. they were really interested in like Volker and Peter. They went to the Netherlands. They went to Belgium. They get yes. the dogs, and I mean, you know, they get these NVBK dogs, and they had pedigrees, and they, that's they spent a lot of time, and and they have a lot of knowledge for sure about this, and then. You know, you know, Peter, he bred a lot, Löwenfels. So people got more and more the Malays, and then you see, oh, the yellow foxes. Yes. But at the end, there was the podium. Oh, there was one yellow fox at the top, and, you know, so the pe people liked. And this happened to me, too. You know, I saw the dogs, and I, ah, that's a breed I like. So then, no rumors, but they were healthy, you know, usually. Like me, I had always the problems with the shepherds or with, with my doorman, with the hips, with the elbows, with whatever. Yeah. So, okay, healthy, they are able to work. Let's try. Many people failed. You know, like when you watch now, when you go back, like the very successful people, like Knut, Peter Scherk, they, they did not came from the shepherds, they came from different breeds. They came from yes, the boxers. True. And I think the typical German Shepherd owner, this was the, the guy who failed with the Malinois because, you know, I mean, you know, of course, it's a different breed. They have different issues. You can uh. go with the German Shepherd and, like, and then go, okay, I'm not going to do it this way. I'll do it the, your yes. way. At the end, the German <laughs> Shepherd will do the thing, you know, yes. and the Malinois is more, was forever more sensitive and yeah. needs more It's social different. Yeah. contact and... So they failed and, ah, and that's good. That's really interesting. That's very true. I was wondering why. I mean I mean that's for sure must be one of the reasons, right? Yeah. For for everybody having boxers, uh, Dobermans yes. and, and not the easy breeds. Right. Or compli not easy, complicated breeds, you know, not yeah. I yeah, mean you yeah, cannot yeah, train yeah, a boxer or doberman like a like a German Shepherd. Not at this time, even not at this time. And mm. And for me, it was the first contact with Seppi. Mm -hmm. And this was when I contacted the DMC, to the German Malinois Club. And this was when I was, I don't know, two months, two months, I was at a K9 unit as a patrol officer. And, and then in my state, they started, at this time, we have this normal police department. In, in the police departments, there were one or two dogs. And then they start to centralize You know, like they have, they made just, they built just these K9 units. Before there was no, no K9 unit. It was okay. a K9 officer in a regular police station and yeah, nobody yeah, wants yeah. to drive with him because they had a police car <laughs> for the dogs and, you know, it stinks and smells in the hair. So he was always alone. 
And then they start to centralize this. And, and at this time, in my first six months, I bought for sure 80, 90 police dogs. Wow. Because they start to they centralize, came. they yeah, need yeah, more yeah. people. And this is how I met Seppi. I, I know I him before from the sport because he was the judge. And, and, and then Emil Moltini, he's a French ring guy from France. He, mm -hmm. he worked uh, the Grand Final one yes. time. He was one of the very dangerous French ring helpers. And I met him and the breeder uh, what, from Flansba, they also French breeder. This was the first time we met and they came to us and offered some dogs and Seppi made the contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, and like it was in these times, you know, we tested the dogs and after we trained our dogs all together. And so we did stupid things. Yeah, I, cool. I sent my, f my, my mix Malinois on, on Emil as a super friend ring helper, you know, and let's see if my dog can do it. Right. Yes. <laughs> yes that was the time. And then, and then Seppi <laughs> asked me, because there was this Körung, this breeding test at his club, and they need a white dog. Huh? Also, the, the, you're talking the DMC Körung. The DMC Körung, the so high level. it at already his, started. Yes, yes, it's already okay. started. But the, and there was the Körung at his club, which is close to where I lived, or which was there. Mm -hmm. And if I don't want to do the white dog, for this curve. I, I had no idea what, what will happen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I have to say they, so I went there one day before and they showed me what will happen in this, you know, crazy run through yes. things and attack the dog and then French ring helper at the end, at last station. So, okay, so I do this. I mean, at this time you just tried, you know. Of course. Yes. Oh, of course. And also there was Volker Riedel with Idol was also at this competition. Mm -hmm. One of his French dogs he brought in and he yeah. played a lot. Yeah. And so this was my first contact with the DMC and then I was interested in, I was interested in the breed. So I decided from this moment, okay, this breed is for me. Okay, I will buy a female, I will be a part of this DMC. And that's what I decided. That's how, yeah, cool. So, and that's how I started. And because I do helper work and then Seppi asked me, or. Oh, I mean, he was not in charge, but Edgar was in charge, or Peter or Volker. Do you want to do helper work for Köhrung? That, that's that's how it yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yes, I said, okay, this is my club, or was my club. This is my club. So I did all. I went. I was I became a judge. I became judge for the breeding program. So this is. And do the Malinois know? get bigger and bigger in this time. Right. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a very exciting time everywhere, but especially in Germany in that yeah. time was a very and and somehow I don't know why but it, it really attracted very good trainers yes. right yes. at that time yes. um yeah. but how what what how did the Kyorong even like what was it behind that it happened because normally when you think about Malinois you think of Ger of, of Belgium yeah. and they they would breed anything to anybody that has just one name like Mina to yeah. Josh and whatever. And there is no breed test, there is nothing. But then Germany has the big tradition of breeding tests and I, I'm gonna speculate because I wanna hear, but mm. I, I have to tell you first my thinking. I, I always believe that the Kyorong, the DMC Kyorong, started because at the time Germany wasn't allowed to play with the bite suits in the, the ring sport. Yes, also. And somehow that yeah. gave you the opportunity to to push a little and to f to kind of strip the dog and yeah. find out a little bit more than just the, the sport, right? The or idea behind this test. So, okay, we had these dogs from Belgium, from France, Netherlands, mm. and they had all their ring sport. Yes. And at least one part of the breeding partners, usually the males, they went through this program. So they get tested in this program. And the idea behind was, okay, Schutzhund is no test for genetics. So we have to think about, we have no ring sport, so we think about doing 
yeah something like this and 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 so all you know so what 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 we are looking for in this curve like like in belgium okay the dog has to go straight you know this was is one main part of our right. curve like the and drive has to override yes. the environment yes right that was one main part always <laughs> and all this distractions with noises so this was the idea behind now i mean and i said this long time ago out of my opinion the curve failed totally so because yeah you yeah. know training took over genetics by far right. so that's one thing but the idea behind was not bad they said okay we have these super nice dogs i talk about belgium we have these super nice dogs they are from belgium and they breed because of their ring program right it's a so we have to find something what's which is close to much, this yeah uh, but okay. at okay. the end for me it failed yeah you know like uh, early on and and we we mentioned sepi but for like people obviously the audience especially in the states that's going to listen uh, uh his name is uh josef schmidt and he had the dog schnitz, schnitz the 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 uh-huh. i don't know was it 92 or no no or later he was yeah he he won the world championship was, no, 1999. he was a a, a judge and he, he was one of the people at the time that you know everybody respected for sure and um i don't even know i think it was him and edgar one time with django i was at the world championship and they walked up to me and they're like i want to ask you something i'm like sure like your dog did with the dumbbell he came but then he he knew that something was wrong and he changed mm. like was that trainer or was that the dog something and the you know some at the moment somebody asks you something like this you're like okay that that's a dog person that's not just uh oh. somebody from Sebi the crowd. was the judge at this competition do you yes, remember yes it was true. the, the fmbb in that's Spiesen. right that's right the judge protection that's right so then eventually you know i got to know him and then we were i, I was always curious about the kerong of course and like he was talking how it was very interesting in the beginning the kerong because they could just think of oh let's you know let's do this and that's going to test the dog and it really would test the dog but then i guess there was um it was more of a freestyle and then certain people started to be like well you're not doing this to my dog and you're doing this to different dogs so there is no really like a uniform program and the moment the uniform program comes then you are able to train for yes, it that was and that's where it started to kind of go bad he was giving me really funny examples of the one you know where the the guy sits with the newspaper and whatever and the dog is on a down or mm. you know and then he jumps well the dogs don't like in the beginning you see the dog is really on the down and he's just looking mm. at the clouds and butterflies and then after some kyorongs now people are training and the dog is on a down it's like it's gonna bite anything that moves no. right and it just changed everything is that that true or uh, yes that's true i mean one sometimes it was too much freestyle you know so right <laughs> it was maybe not yeah yeah not i will, will not say unfair but it was very very freestyle and then and and that's like we i mean the Germans are like this, we need the rules, you know, so we make more rules and then that was the beginning of the end. Then but somehow the Kjorong started to select the wrong dogs, yes, right? Yes, That's sure. what happened. That's, yes. that's an interesting thing. Yeah. The problem is, when I look back now, so we really have actually a lot of Malinois in the breed. Some breed a lot, they would not pass a Körung at the German Shepherd Club in Germany. Mm. Wow. Because, like one thing, at the Körung, the dog, there is also the exterior. 
you know. So they get measured the high, check the testicle and the teeth. And we have dogs now in the breeding program, they are not able that they can handle this. So they are afraid if the judge is coming for testing tes testicle, they jump on the handler, they pee themselves, they are afraid, they are crazy aggressive in a nervous way. But we never looked for this, you know. So we let them go on the parkour for biting, and they did. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the basic temperament is the worst probably you can ever imagine. Yeah. I mean, if a, if a two or three-year-old dog is not able to handle this, I come and put the, you know, the, to measure the height or check the testicle or, or check yes. the teeth. Yes. If he yes. cannot handle this, he's not worse for the breed. If I go to the German Shepherd Club Körung or to the, Rot or to the Rottweiler breeding test and my dog acts like this, they kick me out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will not even have a chance to show how good my dog bites. And I think this was one of the mo main problems in our Körung. We always said, yeah, that's the breed, that's the Malinois, they're nervous, but at the end they bite. You know what is cool? I mean, not, not cool, but the, what, what is interesting, that specific, like, checking dogs' teeth, testicles, measure at height, that, like, we think of them as such very basic things, and then you get a dog that is unsure and it either tries to run away or tries uh. to snap for for really no reason. And I'm thinking, forget about dog sports, just conformation. Uh. People still think that that's a, oh, you cannot touch him, you cannot check his teeth. It's only that. But that's a whole package of showing yes. that dog's insecurity and just being uncomfortable. And being comfortable is like, like to me, uh, as a breeder, and, and we're going to go there because I, I need to hear you stories. Cause, but as a breeder, one thing that always gets neglected, or two things, one is longevity. I think it's super important. I mean, yeah. dog that's seven years old and it's already acts like a 14 year old or yeah. gets cancer or, or, or whatever, you know? If it's a good dog, of course you train, of course you go and compete, but you gotta see a dog that's 14 years old and is still somehow dog, does, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's like, hey, there, there's something important there, right? Yeah. And the same thing with, with that stability. It not being dumb, so I, I, but actually being stable. Uh. And look, Van Stebrush at the time, he uh, there was one time, and I sat down and was talking to me, and just old Belgian stories of Malinois, and he's like, there's two types. There is the primitive Malinois, and there is the one that's more trainable. And you always kind of breed the two because that's the ultimate, but you cannot stay here. Uh. You always, you need the primitive. You need the one that's not going to, when you call him, it's not going to fly to you and say, oh, what's up? But it's going to come. And nothing's going to happen fast. Nothing's going to happen with desire, but it's stable. Uh. And then you need that, right? And I think that DMC, where it end, it ended kind of being trainability and reaction and reaction and trainability and fast and speed, and then somehow there was a break point, right? I think we have we had the, f the wrong picture, you know. Like we talked about, you know, with my wife with, and with people, and we talk a lot about this. Even if I'm not in the breed anymore, I, right. I talk about. But like on our trip now here to Florida. We talked, and maybe is it, yeah, that's right. We thought, okay, we, years ago, we pushed the button, and the dog starts wagging the tail, and is active. Good dog, mm -hmm. hard mm -hmm. dog. Now I think, a hard dog, if I push the button, which I'm not allowed to, but if I would push the button with a hard dog, he would not be active. He would say, okay, I do what you want, but in my way, slow. That this is probably the hard right. dog, and we 
there were some hard dogs like this, but we over interpreted this, you know, that's not the activity. They were probably never hard. Right. You know, yeah. And this is maybe one main thing, and this is what is missing now in the breed. The dogs are not not hard anymore, you know. They are not able to live with bad circumstances. They are not able to drive in the car. They they need two days after they drive five hours to a competition to relax and right. That's that's I think that's the main thing. And 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 in the DMC we always try to level up the Körung for more, but at the end it gets worse and worse. And then the most disappointing thing for me was after a few years or long time we we had the stakeout test when I started and then we took it away. Mm -hmm. And then we Giving, I, I love the stakeout test because, yeah. like, to explain it for the just for for the people that listening. So the stakeout test, you stake out your dog, you leave him totally alone, and then a person is coming and just testing in different ways, and it's not need for fancy crazy things. Just go and look what he how will, the dog will yeah. what you know. So. So we bring back the stakeout test, and I was still in the, in the judging, in the Körung, in breeding test judging, and I had a lot of Körung at this time. I'm sure 100 dogs I judged. Mm -hmm. And there was not one dog who was like, you know, like an, like an open aggression. You know, just standing there, tail up, and said, okay, let's go. Come. Not one. There was some, like, a little bit crazy, probably the most trained. The most dogs, passive and afraid. And when I say the most, I really mean the most. Hmm. 80% hmm. for sure. Afraid. But and kind of reactive, basically. Reactive, but negative, reactive. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. They were not able just to to handle me one time I just <laughs> I just you know so five minutes they were alone I just stand in front of them and check my watch and said okay I'm not sure I think two minutes so I said okay I just stand in front of you two minutes they were not, not able to handle this boo, 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 boo. <laughs> yeah or they like this and go <laughs> away, you know away. turn around yeah. in circles yeah. they try to escape in this situation and there was not one dog out of hundred, interesting, and and I think this was for me the thing. Okay, something went totally wrong, and like also, so I thought back, you know, like also at this curve when I said I make this two minutes, so there was also a playing part, play with different objects. Mm -hmm. Yes, and what we had at work, we had system, we had this piece of metals, and this was for special detection stuff, and we have. Thousands of them at work at my department, and nobody uses. So I thought, okay, I know there are twenty dogs. I take. You have enough. I yeah. take enough, so each dog can because it was playing and searching for the toy. So I thought, okay, for each dog, I take a brand new one. Yeah. At the end, I need two because no dog touched it before. <laughs> they were not able to play with metal. Right. And then I thought back when my I started as a police, the, the typical police dog test. Stake out, play with metal. And these were the dogs we bought at this time. And these were the dogs they were washed out from the sport. But they still did this. And now we have this high class breeding. And they were not able to, to act normally in the stake out. And they don't, I mean, you know, they, we I try to play and make, you know, I throw this metal thing and they go. And the first second they bite in, they'll, oh, I don't want and come back. They right. didn't. Man. I I have problems with tests for some reason, and again, I mean, I just I bred so many dogs and doing guide dogs, and they had like in the guide dogs they oh. had their breeding programs and testing and volunteers and like it was a big deal, and like when I think about the metal, sometimes you can have a dog that's gonna fool you, in in a way that if if a dog is you know, just kind of what we were talking about, the, the dealers and the dog lives in a crate that comes out 
and there is this burst of energy and they gotta do something and the only thing they have is a pipe and of course they try to they try, yeah. get you know but the overall desire and motivation to play it's not really motivation to play it's just pure f frustration of okay i'm finally out and i'm free and i'm just gonna grab something and it can really full I, I guess you can easily prepare a dog to fool you if you know what you're doing, yeah. right? Uh, but at the same time, if it that's that's where it's difficult to test because you don't know did you did you prepare the dog, yes, and how do I compare that dog to the dog that is not prepared and maybe doesn't want to buy the metal but he's spending 20 minutes and he's not giving up and he's trying to push it and it's like, okay, I, I, I doesn't feel good to bite it, but I'm not quitting, I, I want to play. Yeah. And then how do you, you know? It's yeah, how do you balance? But, but even this, you know, I mean, it's not what many people think. Like there is this search for a toy mm. in this Körung, you know, or was, and, and then many people think, okay, if the dog goes straight, takes it and go out, that's the super dog. I mean, right. that's not a super dog. Maybe he had just luck. Exactly. Exactly. So you, oh, good. I'm no friend of testing anymore. If I would still breed more, I think always it's important to know your dog, to know things, and it would be the best if you know your breeding partner. If you know them from a puppy age, from training. So what I always say, like like we did now at the workshop, three days training in a row, and the dog does not give up from Friday to Sunday, then it's... right. Right. For sure no bad dog. You see a lot in these situations. And all of our testing was not good. Oh, so not if you one. were to think of doing like like let's say you, you would set up a another Kyorong program. Anything that comes to mind that you would What I would do, but this put is, in. This is not possible. I would for me it would be enough. A character test, you know, how acts the dog in normal situation. That Go to Starbucks, have a coffee, whatever. Also, <laughs> when we came here to the trip. We walked at the, at the Frankfurt Airport, and there were a few people, you know, with I don't know, little dogs, whatever, and they just walked, you know, in the airport and the crowd, and and then. Maria said, okay, maybe that's the problem, but because if you have a Mali who acts like this, you say, boy, that's a super dog. And for them, it was just normal, you know, they just right. walk, right. they go there, the, the, the stairs, and that's, and, and we are super happy if a dog is like this, but this should be the normal of a dog. But then, I think that's why the, the, there is something about the Belgian program that selects stable dogs. Yeah, but maybe they select really, and you know, what, I mean, for me, the best would select the offspring. This shows me if a dog is worthful for breed. Yeah. No matter how, yeah. how I, I think he is, you know. If he produces yeah. in a litter 50% of good dogs, no matter what I think of him, he must be a good producer. And But it w it's not possible to find a system, I think, you know, to, to check all the offspring. But this would be for me the most worthful. I mean, you don't need to check all of them, a but few, it's still but a good amount. Yes, but it's it's still the way better option when it comes to breeding than. Oh, this is the the last modern dog right now. This yeah. is the trendy dog. This is the, and then everybody all of a sudden breeds to that dog, and next thing you know, there is more than 2,000 liters, oh. which is crazy, but it, oh. it really happens. And now the genie is out of the bottle, whatever the genie is. Oh. Now go <laughs> go do something about that, you know? Like I, especially with Malinois, I follow them for so long and, and you can see how a kennel can have a certain type and can be a, oh, this is the kennel where you wanna get a dog. No, that's not the kennel where you want to get a dog. That's the combination you want to get a dog from. And next thing you know, that kennel for some reason loses 
that stuff that yeah. produces. Not yeah. that it's good, but that, that produces the line. And then it moves somewhere else. And then it moves somewhere else. You kind of got to know where it goes. But the, the, the core temperament and the, the type of dog is still there. It's just not in that kennel or that kennel. It just somewhere. Yeah. Right? It's, it's yeah. very interesting this way. I would so, not test, you know, no. I would not test. Yeah. I would do something because, you know, I, I think not every dog should produce himself, you know. Right. So wash out the really bad stuff for sure and then watch the offspring. And it's crazy talking about breeding, especially in a podcast because, again, like even what I'm going to say right now, it's it's can create confusion yes, yes. <laughs> like you you breed once or twice and then you know you better know yeah. right and that was that was like i mean there's so many invaluable uh, just knowledge i got from from the belgian people back then it was like and i was like man but that female she doesn't bite. Like she literally, like you're with a with a burlap oh. and a bamboo stick, and she's just she's not afraid. She's just like, yeah, what what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I I wouldn't do nothing with this dog. And then you have this Belgium old guys with the you know the, the blue. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like she's a good mom. Uh, and she comes from this dog who comes from this dog if we don't try it we don't know yes yes it's that I mean, simple that's the problem if you would try and find out it's good or bad but i think you know so people also yeah they want to breed right know? and even if the the, the 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 offspring is bad health problems whatever they do again Right, that's for, you know that's that's the main thing. And then it's interesting we have good dis discussions the last two years with old ex DMC members. You know, like like what Volker Riedl is talking. If you a breeder, we are no breeders. I mean, I was never a breeder. You are a breeder. You have many dogs. You can breed. You can check out. You have ten females. You can whatever you can check out. Okay, this produced this this female not. You know. Right, so right, right. If you want to breed good dogs, you have to make a lot of litters. Yes. To find yes. whatever you like. And and we had this with with Peter Engel or Volker Riedel or Anki. You know, they they breed a lot. And then and then you, if you are honest to yourself and say, okay, maybe I have here the super female, but I make two litters with two with two different males, two different lines, and obviously it does not work out. It's better to stop. That's a breeder. Yes. Yeah. But you have to try. You have to try different things. You have to. It's it's super and hard. Yes. It really, it's hard. Okay. And what is like as a breeder, the heartbreaking part is when. Yeah, I mean, you're trying to breed for this, but then something else comes, and you need to f decide what you do. Oh. How do you find a home? Do you put it down? Do you like? I, I spend so much money on on little puppies <laughs> going to the vet. They think I'm crazy, and I just it's like okay, I feel responsible, you know. It's just like, but I mean, I'm not saying that that's the right way or not right. I mean, there is so many factors to that. But tell me about. I mean, talking breeding. So, tell tell me about Lupanus and I. I remember the first time when I came to your place, and I mean, Duke was kind of old then. I think it was like maybe yeah. nine, eight, ten-ish, like you know. Yes. yes probably. Uh, but I never really actually got to see him at the time. But how? Where? Where? Where did that breeding and what? I mean. There is still, I even mean, even in my paper, my, my, yes, I mean, so my papers, I have uh, quite a few of the dogs, yeah. for sure, yeah. for sure. 
I mean, let, it's he was a dog like all dogs, the good sides and bad sides, you know. But what people talk now, I mean, but I don't care about what I. I yeah, but you. it's interesting, you know. Like a few, I don't know, two years ago, Biel Wallström, he posted. I mean, he likes to post in Facebook, and he of posted course. a good thing. He said, it, uh, "It's not. How is it? Okay." A dog with good genetics can do all. It's not about breeding for police or breeding for sport. Right. It's just a question of the training I put on this dog. Do you believe that? Because I I believe that I, very yes, much. Yes, so. for sure. So because there is always oh that's a ring line, that's a yes. IGP line, that's a no. no. A good dog like, is a good dog, right. and that's what I think, okay. and that's what what I also see. Like in our crazy times with the DMC, we had all this contact to the ma mainly French ring, and and we go there with our good sport dogs, IGP or Schutzhund dogs, and and the helpers did this and this, and the dog functions. Yes. Yeah. So it it should be great. And with Duke, for me, it was the mother was a Depotois dog. I bought older. She was not good race for sure. Mm -hmm. She was not in Belgium. She was in Germany, but. She, She was that type of dog now, you know, she was not able to do the sport I I wanted. The levels, yeah. Yes, because she was, okay, if you put pressure, she's like, okay, I do. You know, but like a mooly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. she bites, she had grip, she played like crazy. Okay. So I, And then I put Schnitz, the depot war, on. He was the dog. Yeah. Like, more on the extreme side, you know. And the whole you little... You know, I never... I never actually met the dog in person. Okay, he, he put he him down before I ever met him. He was all but not social. That was his right. main problem. So, uh, for sure, for the most people, he was, for today, he would be no good dog be because he was over aggressive. In, so, you know. But this is, the, the, this is our problem right now. Like, we, we think that. If we have the ideal dog and we keep bring breeding that ideal dog, we will keep ideal dogs. Yes. And we need variations. We need like we literally need all variations. I well maybe not the spooky ones with the the runs away from the gunshots or whatever. No. But you really need all the variation. What I really liked about Schnitz was not his aggression, but I, I liked his aggression too, but He worked in obedience for nothing, 40 minutes. And you know Seppi, I mean, right. he's dead now, but he was the laziest human being I ever <laughs> met. <laughs> so he was too lazy to give a dog a toy. Uh. You know? <laughs> and so he just tell him fools and this dog did all and We 40 minutes it. and the tail was up and he was still running. And at the end he gets the <laughs> whatever There ball and that's that was it. And that was why I choose him for me because I like this type. And Duke, you know, he was, I was quite successful in sport. I won the, the DMC yeah. Nationals. I won the VDH, uh, AWDF. I was in the world team, FCI. And on the other side. I, I mean, your resume, when you, when you like, and I'm going to put it down on the podcast. Uh, I mean, it's really impressive, like from all the areas you've done. And on the other side, he was a good police dog. You know, he had some good life bites. <laughs> he was always there when I need him. So what people say now, you know, we need this type of dog. I mean, he was it with all his mistakes. Yes. You know, he was a little bit sensitive with noises. We talked about this the yeah. two days before. Yeah. Sensitive, not in the form of runaway. Not but shutting down, just excitement. Just, oh, yes. Excitement. And also. He was very social with the family, but he was very antisocial with everything around outside of the family. For me, he was a good dog. You know, I mean, for sure, there were dogs the same quality. I almost want to check the pedigree because I haven't looked at the pedigree a long time. But do you know where Schitt's, Schnitt's parents were? Because there was a dog at the Diopotua. His oh. name was Nelton. No. Have no, you no, heard no. of him? Yes, I know. But he was not yeah. out of Nelton. No. That was a... That, that, I, man, I wish I 
could yeah. see that dog today. Yes. I was interested one time in a Nelton offspring breeding, but I never really like he was a dog that he looks at you and and you don't read nothing. Like he just looks at you and are you looking at me? Or are you looking through me? There's just yeah. nothing in the language. But every time when you see him in public, he was with the muzzle. But he was very low kick. He wouldn't like you. He wouldn't draw attention. He just kind of walks around. Uh, that was a, a a dog you you don't fuck with. No, in tr I mean you never know. Just I know what people tell you because you know he was the David breed and you he had the pedigree, but this this was not the pedigree. Oh, of course. So, but it should be no shape people, but Atos, but I mean, at the end you have to believe <laughs> what, yes. what someone told you. I have the information from the girlfriend of Luke, uh -huh. but I don't know if he, he remembers Schnitz, you know, that's like, so I was Those were the great times. Those were, man, there was that m also, I think that whole mystery about pedigrees with the Malinois kind of made it even more attractive to everybody. There was like a, so it, oh, every, a open secret mystery <laughs> of like, oh, what do you know? Now what do you know? I mean, on the one side, it's good. I have no problems. On the other side, we went in some traps out of this, For sure. know, like this SDCA stuff. And so like people, you know, they always had like, oh, you know, this, this, this weakness of the backhand. What mm -hmm. they called ah, this is from Shea Bibo, and now we have this SDCA test one two three four and uh, and 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 so in my first my ever first little I did I had all I had this a taxi mm. and but nobody know this yeah exactly uh, how did and, you and, and I took a dog Nelson de Colombo feel it was I took him. He was FCE, FCI world champion after I took him. Mm -hmm. I did not took him because of that, but we had the brother in police and he was a phenomenal dog. But he was not able to breed because the, he had no, you know, no, no trial, no curl, nothing. So I checked the pedigree and I found this Nelson. He was in Austria. And I checked and he was over a French dog, Gotha, de Bercher de Vaillant was the name. And I checked offspring of Gotha, nice, so I took this dog. And then I had this ataxi in the little, but <laughs> I mean, right now I know the pedigree of this dog was for sure not right. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, this was the trap I stepped exactly. in. Exactly. Huh? And because you had, not, you had not the chances like today to get all these informations. Right. I right. mean, today the world is like oh, very out of class. Oh, very different. Uh, Ed competition like a dog competition they will come uh, in belgium people i mean from germany from everywhere and luke van stebrush would be sitting on a table like this and there will be a line of people that's the the, the opposite operator right just yeah. for the people that know and he had this big like a freaking book like probably this big and he would open it how I mean, it's all handwritten with ink and pencil, and I mean, it's you're thinking like Harry Potter uh, story. Uh, and you tell him the name of the dog, and you show a pedigree, and then he goes like this, like this, like this, and then in a little piece of paper, he writes you a few this. names. I have them. I, like I have for my, uh, the, the first dogs. Now, how true is what he told us? Yes, we Nobody have to believe, knows, you know. <laughs> I mean, it was really a Harry Potter story. Uh. I mean, really. Speaking of which, he he's still breeding. Well, he got back into it. He messaged. That's what I heard. Yeah. yeah, he sent me a message on Facebook. Hey, I'm look whatever. Like I don't know exactly what the message was. I'm the Diopotoa breeder. And I'm thinking there's no, there's no way this mm. is, this is gone, mm. done. This is somebody that wants to, to do, you know, <laughs> to copy. social media. But 
but I answer. Yes. <laughs> It's the problem you answer today. I Everybody. answer, <laughs> and of course, then we talk few, few, few sentences, and I know it's him. But yeah, he's back into it, which is very cool. Um, but so, what? Uh, how did you end up stop breeding then? Because I mean, everything was. I mean, I was never so interested in breeding. Really, you know, it's it's it was more just okay. I have the female. Yes, I do a little, but I... But many people really like... I mean, when you go back into so many pedigrees, you see yes. him in there. Yes, he's in, but he's in like many other dogs in this time. Right. With Stuga, I was not even interested in him as a breeding male because he was, he, I sold him to police. <laughs> hmm. So all the breeding fees went to the government, not to me. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> that was... But I thought he produced some like every dog he produced some nice dogs and some bad dogs like yeah. that's normal but i was never so interesting in breeding myself mainly i think if i'm not a breeder i mean like you you know you breed as a breeder and i think all the other people they should breed if they want a new dog then they should breed mm -hmm. you know that's what i think they should breed for themselves and and not just breed that's, that there are some puppies on the street. That's that. I think that's the most interesting part of breeding is yeah. to to have some generations, and it's like, hey, I I know you. I mean, we had we have now our dog Nike. She's inbreed on Duke. So Maria has her dog and her competition dog, and we had this one litter and. Okay, and then we try to take another litter or make another litter, mm -hmm. but she get injured in the breeding, and so she lost probably or maybe she was never pregnant, but she lost the puppies. She had big problems. We had to take her to the clinic, to the wet. But we are not. Yes, we will. We would. We will breed the next time, probably, or if we breed, if Maria needs a new Malina, we will maybe do a breeding again. And if we decide not to breed, we will buy another dog somewhere. So that's what we do. I'm interested in, in breeding, you know. I, I, I'm interested in genetics and... Yes. But, but, uh, oh, it's 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 a mess. It's yeah. super hard. If you want to do it the right way, it's it's super hard. Because you have to, you have to kind of dare to experiment. Yeah. And experiments are guaranteed to go wrong uh. and then you have to have an answer what do you do with those puppies what yes, do we what do we do that's the and that's part. a hard one yeah. that nobody would likes to talk about you uh. know and, yeah. and that's the bad part i mean you have the litter and you see okay this dog is not good right yeah. but you have to give it away anyway so so what do you do, you know, and then people are coming and then sometimes you know them and then you don't want them to have a bad dog out of your kennel. And no, that's but that's true. Like that's you really, as a breeder, it's the, one of the worst thing is to sell a puppy knowing that the puppy has a problem. Yeah. That's is just, oof, this is a hard one. I mean, on the one side, it's changed in Germany now. What what is good is also a very bad thing. When I started, Malinois puppies, they were never sold as a pet. Right, and they were what like four hundred euros. Uh, five, uh, five, cheap six. and never as a pet. And this changed a lot. You know, I mean, here in the U.S. probably more than in Europe, but now. You see more and more Malinois as a pet, so it makes it easier to sell the washout. Also, yeah. But the problem is we have more washout than you know. <laughs> and and all of a sudden everybody thinks that oh it's a Malinois it should act spooky. It's like no Malin. Good Malinois don't act spooky. <laughs> no, they act like dogs, <laughs> like normal dogs. <laughs> uh. 
I mean, for sure there are no German shepherds. Mm. But you c that's maybe one main thing that we always excused this strange behavior with the breed. Right. And the really good dogs, what I know, they never act a longer period strange. I mean, each dog... Exactly. No, when they start true. from puppy, they have their faces and there is, you know... But the very good ones, they were, were very fast, good again. That's where the, the Belgian ring somehow... I don't know what's with the program and I don't know what's with the tradition. But I really, I really think that as long as that program stays, the breed has a chance. I mean, we talk now a lot about we would like to get more knowledge, you know, about the Belgium dogs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not so easy. It's I mean, it's the same. It's it's like the I, IGP thing. It's a little bit of close stuff, you know. So it's hard to get in. Then you don't know, you know, which with who with whom you are talking. Who can you trust? And and and. But we want to go. The next years, we want to try to go to Belgium and watch some trainings and watch some right. different dogs right. and, and get more information about these NVBK lines. You know. Yes, and you know what is going to be interesting for you? You may go with the idea to see a specific dog or a club yeah. and you're going to hit, you're going to take a wrong turn and you're going to go to some local club and you're going to be like, I like that dog. Yeah, probably. And that's the best thing yeah. that can happen. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. they're there. They're like there, you know? Yes. That's what we think, you know? We, we we think we should look more for there where our dogs came from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I, so I'm them, the same. I mean, like they produced them in a way that I said, okay, I want one. Right. Tell me about judging. How did it? How what, what what happened? How did you decide to go through the judging? And I mean, you've judged world championships. Uh, you've been to the states. How many? I mean, well, at least three, four, five times. Yes, I mean, yes. you've judged AWDF everything. Yeah. So, how how did that start? It. So okay, when I said okay, I want to be a part of the <coughs> DMC. I'm a guy. I take response over something. So I said okay. At this time, there was just one DMC judge, Volker Riedl. Oh, wow. And <coughs> we had at this time this, this called ACG. This was the, the all the working dog breeds and the DVG, DHV. They had this, this, this organization, this board. And the DMC was always under critique because we had just one trial a year. This was the championat. Mm. Yeah. And so the, the DMC as a club was looking for judges. And so for me, it was no question because this was my club. So this is for me a, a thing. A way to contribute to the breed and the yes. club. Yes, so I decided to become a judge. And it was on the other side, it was very easy for me because I was a judge for police already. Mm. And we had this combination so I did not have to do the whole judges education. This was also in the in the rule books at this time in Germany. So th they took me kind of over. I did did a few apprentice judges with Peter Jacobs, one of my big mentors in judging and sport. I, I know you him know him, well, Peter. Course, I mean, he's of course uh, one of the coolest people in the yes, sport for so sure. And and this is how I started. And then which one is what 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 trial was your first one that you're like wow I'm I'm actually really a, a well accomplished judge I mean I got I mean, it's selected pretty fast to judge I judged the AW at the, the German <coughs> AWDF the VDH championship you know I, I had no almost no judging before just one club trial wow. and then the championat and I mean I always liked the VDH or the AWDF, which I, I think I judged three times. AWDF. I always like the different breeds, you know. 
Okay. That's what was one of my. But that's your background, and you've had you've yeah. had different breeds. Yes. yes, and and I was never like you know I was never like <laughs> oh I have to be a judge because I have to travel every weekend. I'm super happy if I can go there. For me, it was more like a response to my club. You know, I'm just giving back, giving and and help this organization yeah. what I like. Yeah, to yeah. be a member yeah. of. And and it was also so we started you know we had always this one trial and then we started to make like club tri trials and regionals and I think this was a good thing at this time. It was also this regionals and club trials for DMC. I mean we talked about this before. We we it was education for the judges we we had then and for the helper. So this was good to do and. I like judging, but I was never like, okay. You know, if you would ask me, you want to compete or judge, I would ever compete. You know, I would never say, okay, I, I don't compete on this trial because I, I have to judge right. it. But that's I, a lot of the good, the good judges. That's the dilemma you face always. So for me, it was never worthful, you know, I hear the judge. And but you do have passion for judging and you do have the eyes for judging. And that <laughs> makes it difficult not to judge. So I, if all works normal, I will be back this year. I, I applied as a judge in uh, the Schnauzer Club of Germany, and it looks like they will take me over now. Anytime we talk points, anytime we look yeah. judging stuff, I I pay attention when you talk. Yeah. I mean, it's difficult to make everyone <laughs> happy, you know. Yes, and it's not. I mean, and being a judge, it's like people really take it like a this is not a, a computer artificial like you're a human and uh, and our brain cannot stay focused five hours non-stop mistakes will happen there's no way um but a good judge and i mean i'm i'm a judge but i don't judge uh, for that reason because i am a competition freak there yeah. is like there is just not possible i yeah. would love to but i i if any day i need to pick no matter what championship it is i would yeah. if i have a chance to compete i go and compete because it's a but i also love the judging and i think the the judges really decide like i sometimes think about well, we have breeders and we have judges and we have competitors and then we have some mix of everything all of them are super valuable but ultimately a good judge is the one that will point out if they have the knowledge this is the right dog yes. because it's the right dog for many reasons not just yes you're a good trainer but you can be the good trainer and you have a dog that's not supposed to really be bred by everybody. But then there is, and, and it's really, this is the ultimate duty of a judge, the way I see it, to be able to, yeah, that dog is, he, he allows you or she allows you to train him. But it's also, an independent animal yeah. Yeah. and and you see you see it as such and then it's like yeah and it stands out and it's a part of the judging that's kind of getting lost more and more yeah. to where it's like about points and people don't realize or judges and judges camps don't realize that as a judge you make somebody a champion you're actually saying hello everybody that's the dog to breed to yeah. for the next five One years sure, yeah. and that's a big responsibility yeah. let me start with one thing when i was new in the DMC and then as a judge Volker Riedel he, w he said to me one time on a trial everybody's darling is everybody's idiot hmm. ah, so <laughs> you know <laughs> right <laughs> so I never said for me I never thought okay I'm here to make everybody happy 
and I don't care, you know. I always try to make the best happy. You know? If I give someone five points more, I punish the good ones. Because if he, for example, if he scores 98, I cannot give him five points more than he deserves. So I, that's what I always thought. You know, if I give more points, I will punish the good ones. Yeah. Because I, there is a border, the 100 is the border, you know, I cannot go higher. Yeah. So this was always my thing. No? And then it came, I mean, you know that I really loved judging obedience. Mm -hmm. I hate tracking because I was so lazy, you walk all the time, but I did also on World Championship. And I did protection. I like in a kind protection, but the problem for me always in protection was you are so close to the dog, so and I'm a helper, and I have different breeds, and you are close, and you see exactly this dog is just well trained. Yes, and makes it very hard for a judge because he plays the rules and he has. Yes. The but we have this board, yes, and the dog fulfilled this board. And right. you are forced to give him points. It's not that I'm, you know, I, I don't bite my tongue because I give a dog at 96, but, but, you know, from what I was thinking, this was for me always, okay, protection is nice, I look and I like, and I'm really, I, I'm super happy if I see a very strong dog in protection, but I see many dogs, I know, okay, I just have to give them the points because the handler deserved They make the point, yes. right. And this is why I like obedience, because there is the part where the handler deserves the point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's a super trained dog, then he can deserve these points. If, he, if the handler is able to make a dog who is not high quality for obedience, bring him in high points, then he really deserved it. And then it's no, no question of breeding. Right. And, and protection is always, for me, Not in, you know, not as a fact, but it's always that's what you said. If I give a dog on a world championship 99 points, people think oh my God. this must be a super dog. Yes. And then you give a dog 99, and you think, hmm, he's a super 99 sport dog. So this makes it difficult, and but you have no chance. You know, you you cannot judge what you think. Nobody w will understand it outside. I mean, that's if you are close, that's another problem with. Like, um, especially ITP, it takes a long time to, to stay in the sport, to understand there's so many nuances and so many, it's like, oh no, this dog looks really good. It looks really good and you don't understand what you're looking at. Yeah, and, yeah because and the, also the, 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 the program changed, or the judging, I mean, now, If I watch now, it's all about grips and all about transitions. Mm -hmm. And I, I always think the most important thing for me is guarding and attacking. Attacking is more worthful than gripping. The strike. Yeah. The cobra. Pop. Boom. Yes. <laughs> no? That's for sure. Even when you throw the ball, yes. and you're like, oh my fuck, he's gonna break his teeth, but he just gone. Yeah. But now you see, I mean, we, we, we talked about, we have examples. I mean, they make super nice grips, super nice ventures, and go out, then like, whoa, ears up, tail up, okay, good points. Right. Yeah. If you watch attacks, hmm, okay. Exactly. Yeah. And, and this is, But this is also very easy. I can take, I can go out here on the street, take the next who's walking there, explain him, just watch. This is the sleeve. The dog has this big mouth. He must be like this all the time. And when the helper stands still, you wait one second and then he goes out and watch. Yeah. Everybody can see and judge this. That's the main problem, I think. Everybody, I can take everybody. This is easy to explain. But it's not easy to explain, okay, you see this dog, he fights, he attacks. He just he does not wait for the decoy to do anything. He is the active part in this thing. 
even if the grip is not full, right? He right. has, he fights, he tries, he makes it, you know. Which makes me, you know, what I, I just thought of it. Helper work at big competition, like it's becoming. You have this. Oh, I'm I'm the super athlete. Yeah. I'm gonna take the dog and I'm gonna take him to the next point yeah. in 2.5 seconds. And if I'm a judge, I'm like, can you actually slow down and let me see what yes. that dog is doing? And and if he's trying to overpower you, like like give me a little, like let me see something. And they just go like, boom, done. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes it's not about fast, cause fast you don't expose yes. the dog. No. You yes. don't show it, you don't strip it down to his natural abilities, right? If you and are so fast, that's what I think, you give the dog no chance to run away, <laughs> you know? Because e even that, right, <laughs> yes, he's just hanging in there in a roller yeah. coaster yeah. and it's, okay, now it's yeah. over. I, I think we don't have this, or many of these helpers anymore, like what we're talking about in the competition. It's so. But if some, uh, if 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 a helper does what we are talking about, I think the crowd would not understand. They're going to be like, replace him. This guy I cannot mean, move. I mean, that's the crazy thing. You know, everybody talks when you go in this all Facebook stuff. Everybody talks about the real dog. Of course. <laughs> oh, that's a real dog, and that's a real dog, and that. And then we had this discussion this year, I don't know. And then there is a helper on the national, he made the dog run. Everybody claims about the helper, you know, the same who talks always about the real dogs. Yeah. Here they claim, ah, oh, this helper did this wrong because this was unfair. Nothing was unfair, you know, the dog was just running. Exactly. Uh, and, and and that's that's the discrepancy in our sport. And, and the same what I always say with the helpers, you know what, I mean, we, we watch, World Championship, 100 dogs, mm -hmm. two helpers, wow, super helpers. They are good in this sport, but who are the good helpers? The 100 helpers who train the dogs. True. This is, these are, you know, the good helpers for the sport. Preparing for. Yes, not, I mean, this, this thing, it's nice and you have to be physical in the, some, some way. I think the first part is pretty easy. Now in these days we have these super fast dogs. Second part you need good technique, but you know that's not all. All about good helper work at the end. Yeah. And for me, the good helpers are the helpers who prepare the dog for this. That's that's. But in in in, you know, when we need, like what what people think about. Okay, this helper he works the world championship. He works the nationals. He must be a good one. At yeah. the end, he's just a good athlete. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But the the uh, I, I'll go further with this. The problem I have is they're good athletes. They they are athletes. They do the right moves. They are safe. But they don't go into the dog's mind and they don't show is that dog strong or is it not strong? And you can as a helper. Yes. We know you can show <laughs> yes, this. You see after the first. And that's what somehow in, in at least any helper uh, programs that I know, it's all about correct helper work. No, you do five steps and you do the stick hit and, and, and it's all this robotic, like mm. your job as a trial helper is to, to be able to uh, show if the dog is strong or weak. I mean, maybe... Within the rules. Yeah, maybe think about what does the word helper mean? You are not yeah, the helper right. of the dog. Right. You are a helper of, of the, the judge. judge. Mm -hmm. uh, so you should help me to find my result. That's the job of the helper. Even, even something as simple as just slow down. Yes, I see you're athletic guy. You're young, you're strong, but slow down. Let me let me see that dog. Give him opportunity to do funny things. Yes. Or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, take the escape. I mean, it it was it's better now, but I, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, at least in Germany, it was so 
kommen full speed. Run as fast as you can. Right. You know? and, and even the strongest dog had almost no chance to show his ability. Because he bites and then before he was, you know, the legs all good, he was at the end, boom, out. Yes. Huh? Yes. Yeah. It's definitely. no race, you know. From I mean, every dog is faster than every human. But it's like a vicious circle because uh. the judges that don't understand, they want the helper to act like that because they want, they're like, okay, let's just make sure that you do the right thing for every dog. And then the helper becomes robotic, oh. and yeah, and uh, yeah. But, but what's the topic about escape? Escape is strike and try to stop, not in the crazy way like people, you know, do it. But oh yes, not artificially, but a natural effort. Try, to okay. He should not pause. You know, he should not push the helper to get, go faster. He should try right. to stop. Huh? That's that's the main thing. And if I run like crazy, it does not happen. And then also for me, I mean, you have in your genetics, you in your breed, you have this, usually this super nice full grips. That's, that's I think, one main character of your dogs you have. Yeah? But also there are dogs, they are not always with the super full grips. Right. And But there is so many other qualities that yes, they can compensate yes, for yes. and you appreciate it. Yes. And... and these super fast strong dogs they will not ever have the full grip right because they are sometimes just too fast to make the boom. priorities yes. i'm gonna get you yeah right yeah and and that's what people have to to learn again you know the same is with the escape i mean if a dog what what people train if a dog makes a curve to get the full grip something is wrong in this dog i mean a strong dog he can learn the technique to make right. the full grip Anyway, or in the most times, but a strong dog will never run a curve. Right. I exactly mean, the shortest, right. the shortest way is a straight. That's what I learned, you know, and not the curve. And, and there are so many things. I mean, even I think if, if we would change a little bit helper type and judge's type. That's the thing. I think it's a combination. It is, it is that conversation between helpers and judges. Yeah. I that mean, needs to happen, and yeah. it I mean, you could you could make when you change little things. Maybe you could make a sp better statement about the quality as a judge, about the quality of a dog as a judge. But in the system right now, you can just look for the sporty training, right? And even if you, even as a judge, even if you see something and you want to say it, the helper didn't really give you. A opportunity to expose it so uh -huh. you cannot say it you just need to award the points yes, and that's what it is because that's the right thing to do at the end you have to take what they offer you you know yeah that's yeah we have here i mean we're trying to to make some something with helpers and we have some ideas how to go it's not all about athletics you have to have, like I think you need to have coordination. You need to have a very good coordination. But if you are not as fast as most other helpers, I think you still should be selected to do helper work yeah. because you're going you're gonna to twitch something different in the dog that the judge is going to appreciate, right? Yes, I mean it's not that. I mean we are both now over fifty, but I'm sure we could work a trial and show and separate the dogs separate, in the categories. You know, I mean I don't want to because I'm right. out of breath after, right. but but I'm sure we could, you know. And then we could never do hundred dogs on the FCI World Championship. That's for sure. But but yeah yeah, there should be a, something to yeah separate the good from the not so good and to wash out the really bad ones that's the problem before we get out I'll, I'll jump in a very different place now because I, I i i said that we're gonna talk about this january oh. the new the new 
legislation in Germany came and, and everybody's talking about it. But before we even get there, what, like, like you, you can tell me what you feel comfortable talking about. I, I'm sincerely curious. I have my opinions, but I'm very curious how in the world this whole thing happened when science apparently said that negative reinforcement, punishment, and all those things are not good and you should only train dogs through positive reinforcement. How, 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 how did that, I mean, it creeped in Europe little by little. Nobody expected that that's just going to happen one right. day and you're not going to be able to train dogs. And, and for, for everybody that's listening, I, I still want to say that when we talk about negative reinforcement and punishment and stuff like that, it's, you can do things very wrong. You can, you can be a very shitty person and you can do horrible things to dogs. And bans, in my opinion, will never prevent that. Like oh. you can, a bad person or uneducated person will find a way to do bad things. It's not about, I'll, I'll take this away from you. you that, that's not ever a solution. But somehow, very sneaky in Europe, this happened to the point where we are right now in 2022 oh. that the landscape is very different and there is a whole new young generations of trainers that are kind of misguided and misled and truly believe that there is a right and wrong way and The competitions, in my opinion, are the real lab, the real test of, oh. hey, I can do it this way. Maybe I train only negative reinforcement, but I'm such a master that you cannot tell how I train. You oh. can never tell how I train no matter what kind of saliva tests and urine tests and what you want to do. And that person, for whatever reason, can do something better than everybody else. Oh. Why don't we find out what that is instead of saying, well, there is this research and this research and science says, oh, we can do it better, but nobody actually shows you how to do it. Oh. And, and so where, how did it all like little by little grow to the point where we are today? I mean, did you not believe that it will get here or? Maybe it's interesting how this new law came to Germany, you know, because like every time they, so we have this animal protection law and this thing, what happens now, this is not a law, this is a bylaw. No? This, this, okay, this pinch color stuff that's in the bylaw, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it's yeah, it's strange because these bylaws, you know, this was so this bylaw was spread in Germany to all these organizations, also to the VDH, you know, compared to the AKC and to the police, so to the wets from the administration. And this was spread one and a half years ago. And the main topic of this bylaw was a little bit about breeding. So you just can have like three liters at the same time as one person. And one main topic was about this dogs to protect the, the herding, herds, sheeping, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because we have this, this wolves coming back to Germany, mainly East part. And so the, the, the professional um, shepherds. Shepherd, yeah. They, they, they actually look, really look, need that. Look for these dogs. And, and this was the main topic of this, this bylaw. And there was nothing about 
the pinch color ban in it. So so it, this is how it came, for example, also to me at, at my department or to the VDH, So and they discussed about it. And then when it was time to to discuss about this law, there was nothing in. And then it go back to the government, to this... Yeah, I oh, don't know. So it kind of got sneaked in. And in then, you know, it came back to the decision, okay, we take this now as a bylaw, and then there was this one sentence in. About mm -hmm. the pinch and whatever. And so, but nobody was asked before about this. There was no discussion, there was just no. nothing, nothing. It, it was just not in. And that's a little bit strange for me. It was, you know, it was, I mean, when this came out first, I think in June, so I said, mm. then I checked what I had before, this, this, and this sentence was not in. So, not the VDH, not the police, not whatever had the chance to, 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 to discuss this. And, hey, that's maybe we have to. No? So, it was in. No? It came from a, from a, animal protection organization, obviously, over the state of Bavaria, and however, they, so this is complicated. I'm, I don't even know. Oh, all. for sure. So it came, you know. Just in short before the decision was done, so there was so in other, so so it was surprising a lot of yes for for us it was a totally surprise in June I mean yeah I'm not I was not surprised that the first of January will come and now we here it is but in June it was like oh you know and so like I can tell you what we did from police side so from the first time this was popped up, we said, oh, we have to do, and we, we try, we had this member of the Congress, and we try, but that, the problem is, we had elections in autumn, like in my state, and in, in, in Germany at all, so they said, yeah, this was the best time to bring this in, because nobody has, Price takes attention. care now about, you know, animal things, nobody cares, they just want to re-elect, and this, and yes. so, so nobody took that's care. That's politics, yes, that that's politics. politics. So there was one member of the parliament, he was a former police officer in our state, and he said, yeah, that's the best time. The best time if you want to bring something in, because nobody will take care about your interests. Wow. So this is how it came in. And yeah, I, I really don't understand. I mean... So what is exactly, like, I mean, I, I read it in German, I read yeah. it in some translation in newspapers it came into, but, but what, what is exactly, what does it say? What exactly, is it's a ban of the pinch, and then all other equipment you can use to that inflict pain. Yeah, and this is not defined yet. And now people get crazy, like Germans are. You know, now they talk about the the fur saver color and whatever. But I mean, now we have to wait for what what will you know what will came out at the end. For sure, the pinch is bent. And, and the other things, we will see that the problem for me is, so there was this sentence in the bylaw, and then they, there was like a part where they explain different things, where they explain why, why we can use now a dog for protect the herd, the, the sheep, you know, that's, and they explained because the scientists said, there is no need to train a dog with negative reinforcement. That's the right. main problem for me. Right, right. That's that's the problem for everybody, really. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's I, I. This is I. I hate, but I always talk about this on my podcast somehow, one way or another, because it's it always comes to that. And I wish that if there is a better way, Show don't me. you want to know? Yes, for sure. I mean, we, I mean, uh, we changed a lot in our training, in a much better way. Or of I course, mean, huh? we should. I mean, huh? it's it's, uh, but when you say, "Oh no, there is science says so it's evidence based and it's whatever," it's like, and it's better. It's like great, 
beautiful. Let's do it. Tell so, me how, right? I mean, what I don't understand. I mean, you can talk about sport. This is just a sport. We need a sport. We need not. True. You know, but we proved in the sport. We proved in the police. We have now a sport history and a police dog history since, since over 100 years. Huh? So I say police proved his work. We prove our work almost every day in the country. Yeah. And what you said, if I want to do anything wrong, if I want to abuse a dog, I, I don't need a pinch. And, and there is no, no general suspect that the police canine handlers are animal abusers you know so the most of us prove the same in the sport if you watch today a competition the most of us prove that the dogs like what they do if you don't i mean the rules change so much if you have a dog which shows just pressure and avoidance yes. you're out yes which is a beautiful so thing. we bring the proof and we i don't talk about sport because the argument will be we don't need Spot, but I I talk about police. We prove this every day that we train our dogs good because they fulfill their job. You know? Yeah. And my, we don't kill the dog or we don't hurt the dog. We don't <coughs> bring them to the hospital exactly. because after training. So we proved it. And, and it's not that you open the crate in the police car and they're like, I'm not coming out. No? It's like, no, no. let's go. Let, uh, let's have yes. fun. And but my argument with that sport dogs is that the hobbyists, the people that train for sport, they also contribute, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's the whole community. We learn from everywhere. Like I'm sure as a sport trainer, you took some things and you're like, this we definitely gonna use in the police no. and the other way around yes. yes like that's how we should go and and i think all the canine science labs they have to be part of this whole community and we all no. work together and find out what is the best ways but to exclude one like i i i always i i'm kind of repeating myself but one of the most fundamentals, fundamental biological programming, every living, even the single cell organism on our planet always approaches something that they like and avoids something that it no. doesn't like. This is like a, a number one fundamental law in at least in <laughs> our planet. And to avoid something bad, ultimately it's a beautiful thing. It's important, you know? And when you are master to, to find a way how to do it, so you, you actually, the dog appreciates your knowledge and, and what you're teaching, combined with everything else, why are we not looking into that but instead we're saying no this is a very bad idea there is a better way but that better way nobody shows you oh. what, how, how is it better man show me i want to i mean i don't talk about scientists that's, you don't have to yes that no that i don't i i have no idea you know what they what they do what and they why, do and what right. they're not but but so so we have in Germany, we have this many people with dogs. So we have the sport dog people, we have the police dog people, and for me, it's one they follow almost the same interests for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the pet dog trainers on the other side, and then we have the animal right activists, which are totally crazy. They have completely different yes. agenda. But just for example. If a scientist and a pet dog trainer organization decides and 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 
tell me what the result of my work is as a police dog trainer. That's for me ignorant and stupid. Yeah. That's all. All I have to say is ignorant and stupid. I mean, we have this pet dog training tradition in Germany. And and then when I drove to my work, I drove about, you know, open fields, I see. And then you see all these dogs and we have this 45 foot leash on the dock. And I see this woman, this man walking with this dog on the 45 leash. So that's for me the proof of a bad training. Right. So they are not able to make a dog come if they call them. The main thing in all of my having dogs is I call them and they come back. So that's the proof of bad training. If the, if they have to work the whole life with this leash on the dog. Right. Sometimes it's like in a Western cowboy movie, they have to like the lasso, you know, and then so. And if these people will tell me, or not me, me as a the group, community, the yes. community yeah. that I'm not able to train a dog in a good way. They don't know what happens, you know. They not are not even they cannot even train a dog in a always nice context. Right. You know right. That, that and and we go back to the police. I mean, if we have operations it's not a even a training field always the same. Six blinds, three on the right, three on the left, the hurdle, you know. So a dog should work in all this different environment. And he, he should work so that we can trust him. Right, 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 as, right. As, as far as possible. And definitely somehow the, the, the whole positive reinforcement narrative is that if you do certain things, that means you're training through punishment and yeah. fear. Yes. But they don't know. Fear is sometimes very valuable and fear doesn't mean that you... I, I don't even know how to explain this in, in right now. Because to be afraid, it's a healthy thing. Yes. I'm it's afraid a, of touching uh, the oven, you know, yes. when it's something you know, that's yes, normal. It's, it's a very normal thing. And, and you actually, even when you are f afraid of something and when you teach how to overcome fear, This is, there is nothing more beautiful than this. This is like a, the most amazing confidence. It's like, hey, I just became somebody. Yes, and yeah, and, and you know, like we talk about fear, you know, I'm, I'm a person, I'm not so afraid of all things at, at all. But when I still work with the police, there are situations, in all situations, there is a little bit of excitement. Yeah. And there are situations there is more than just excitement. Right. And you nobody will tell you that anything else. So and and my job as a canine officer is to do this work with my canine. Right. And I'm excited. I'm afraid. So my dog is excited. Same emotions. The of people course. around me are excited. That's no sterile situation yeah uh, you know i mean you 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 know i never know what my neighbor police officer will do the next situation so my dog should be prepared for different things yeah. uh, he should be able to do this and that's not about punishment i mean nobody wants to abuse a dog yeah. but he should know what his job is to do and and it's not possible to get this safe without negative reinforcement, that's for sure right. nothing. That's the and, problem and with extremes, one or the other, yes, right? And these people who will who tell us this, this this pet dog trainer organization, this you know, they are not able to to prove anything. The only proof I see is it does not work. I mean, that's no, like it's not a hundred percent, but it's there no, were no, some good ones. Sure. But but you see it so many times, and 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 
And this is extremely difficult that people decide over us uh, and they don't even know what to do. And they, if, if we talked about this, if somebody, if you bring me somebody who will show me, okay, this will work in the same way, just positive reinforcement, I will follow. It would be beautiful, yes, no? Yes, for sure. Who, I mean, we like, wouldn't? I mean, <laughs> right, yes, right. Very, very interesting. We changed our training a lot. I don't like to punish my dog, and I don't do. I will not punish my dog for no reason. It's different when you look at sports and when you look and okay, well, yeah, you don't need the sports, but dogs, the reason we have dogs and the reason we've had dogs for so many thousands of years is because they, they really serve us a purpose. They protect us, like it's our human nature. You have a dog and you want that dog to bark when something's going on. It's like a, one of the main reasons why probably, <coughs> you know, cavemen ended up having dogs. Yeah. Like, oh, something's about to happen. And the dog tells you. Then you go hunting with the dogs. You go, they're just like the dog her does the herding. That's, Like there's like actual real purpose. And then we end up having dogs now that have no purpose in life. And and that's the narrative almost in the in the force free and the all positive people. And now from what I see from that legislations in Germany that most likely it's going to end up rolling through another countries because that's how it starts always. We have the animal rights and then we have the need. Like we, you actually need, a, a, as a police officer, you need a dog that you can go on the street and you can trust that that dog's going to do something, but you also know that you can control that dog not that he has to be afraid of you. That's not, nobody, oh, nobody ever thinks of this. And that's where it gets all twisted with the positive reinforcement ideologies that no, no, you're only suppressing and you're making them do things from fear. There is no, if you make somebody to do something from fear, the moment they have a choice, They're not doing it. Yes, for sure. I mean, right? Like we have so many times when, as a, as a protection dog trainers, we can put a dog in a corner and we can make him bite. Uh, But the moment that dog has a no choice, corner. he's not gonna bite. And so, <laughs> right now, from what I understood from the the last papers, is that you can use the prong collars for deployment to control them, but you cannot train them with it. Yes. And that that blows my mind. That helps for nothing, you know. I mean, if I use it in an operation, I should have the chance to train it. That means you haven't actually trained the dog. Yes, yes, that's, that's, that's stupid. I, I mean, that's really no... And this is the, the politics of... of uh, I think for me the main problem is that all these things in Europe or maybe in the US same there it's not about protect protecting animals I think it's more about they won't I mean it's more about they don't want animals in private hands right that's what I think they want right. to get you rid of dogs they make it difficult to have a dog I mean for sure we can talk about this but I saw or I still see so many mentally abused dogs because the dogs are bred for some reason and if you don't give him the chance the outlet to do exactly you know i mean when i walk and i see all these animal protection ladies and men with their dogs and you watch these dogs they are like zombies you know they have not You watch their face and there's nothing like boo. They're lifeless. Yes. Yes, they're like and then you take a dog and watch how he <coughs> went in, in the trial field for obedience and he's like, Why well, here I am. I mean yes. so if you ask both which 
both animals, what do you think? Is your life worthful or not? And one will say, oh, I mean, doesn't matter what I do. Maybe I can die and the other one, yes, mm -hmm. that's my mm -hmm. job to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I think, you know. And they will come, okay, then we don't breed these dogs anymore, but we have these dogs. And, and, and they are here for a reason. I mean... Yeah, there is the, the there is that argument that they kind of try to have that I don't think it's legit at all. Oh, you're you're selecting them to be mean. You're selecting them to be whatever, and and that's not true because any anywhere you look down the history, as long as you can track dog and human relationships, dogs have served as in 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 all these ports and all these areas they've already fulfilled those places that's yeah. why and and the coolest thing about it is dogs like it they choose it it's not that humans necessarily have changed their makeup to make them something that's no. why we don't have tigers yes yeah. we have dogs because dogs want to do this with us and And the moment we stop giving them a purpose, they're gonna end up having being these lifeless beings that you walk them in these no pull harnesses around the block and you feed them. Yeah. And they're of course neutered, spayed, and they cannot breed and they cannot, they don't know even who they are. They just eat yeah. and sleep. Like, It's a like sad life. Yeah sad life but that's what they want us to have and i think ultimately even the most extreme let's say if we keep going down that path little by little we give in to that narrative who's going to be next Yes. positive reinforcement yeah. it's going to be no you, you we don't care about your positive reinforcement end, you should dogs. not train the dog yes. and that the idea is dogs want to be trained and trained may be not the right word but humans and dogs want to interact and training is the way that we find a common language how to interact that's that's really crazy when this discussion starts after june when this bylaw came out so maria she's in a different facebook group she made this test for dog trainers so she get informations about these groups mm -hmm. and in these groups there was this discussion too about this law and I really could not believe how stupid people are and stupid people professional dog trainers because this was groups for these dog trainers, mm -hmm, pet dog mm -hmm, trainers mm -hmm. and there was this like all you know okay my dog wants to chase a rabbit, my dog barks the whole day, whatever, you know, all these main problems. And then the tenor of this group was, if you could not live with a dog chasing rabbits, jumping on people, barking, why you get a dog? You know, and I said, I cannot believe, I mean, that's really the, the most stupid right. thing I ever heard in my life. So, but but maybe that's part of our next generation we have. I don't know. I mean, it cannot be. I mean, I, we I have dogs as an as a companion in life. Right. And we take care that our dogs behave well. But it's a mutual. It's like they really. I mean, dogs really think that they have that person, that purpose of uh, hey, yes. you and I, we are together. And we, yeah, there is there is other people, there is other dogs, there is other animals. They come to our house. We don't necessarily want everybody to come in our house. Or there is other dogs that like that. And then it's a personal choice. But to take away and, and, and it becomes so twisted at this point right now to where somehow the the idea is that 
we have taken dogs and if we've made them mean and they don't like other people or they don't it's a normal like even for humans i mean that's why we have like there is a family and that family eventually gets big enough to where that cousin and that cousin don't get along it's totally normal then there is the village then there is the country then there is the few countries that they make a pact against few other countries and that goes in the whole animal kingdom yeah. you have it you live a, you go and observe any stray dogs any wolves any any animals including even the the most benign like okay i don't know what think of koala or you think it is cute little thing yes. that only eats grass they still gonna fight with each other for yeah. who they gonna mate who, which tree belongs to which animal it's a human and animal nature and to pretend that this does not exist in nature that's the the biggest flaw in that fake science that that's that's <laughs> the problem i mean for us it's difficult because it's difficult to explain what the spot we do you know there's always if you try to explain there's always <coughs> the answer okay but why right so, so so it's my hobby it's my hobby like it's my hobby to drive my motorcycle it's my hobby to go there you know it's a hobby okay for sure it's a hobby many people do not understand but it's my hobby and i think right i should be free enough to choose my hobby as long as i do not disturb other people's in a special way That's and and there is the difference between a dog wanting and liking to do yeah. and dog that doesn't and the dog that don't like to do it we cannot make him no, anyway he will not follow my hobby so we cannot I, make him anyway no. no no and the dogs are there and i just in our hobby we just give the dogs the opportunity to do in the kind of what they are bred for and so many times they will talk about how um i mean that's always the big scare for me of of oh let's shut the protection sports they are just there is no need for that i think the protection sports are so valuable for selection of of stable dogs and also for finding the best training methods and evolve as a finding okay what well, that doesn't work well it, clearly that doesn't work let's move on but let's why would we need to stop the whole training for protection dogs when you when if you're able to control a dog in that high arousal in that aggressive state if you want to and you're able to come to an agreement to do something if you've learned that skill you can apply it on a sidewalk yeah. with a dog that's walking around and it's oh i'm going to fight with this dog oh i'm going to tag the little kid on the roller blades all that training that we do with protection dogs it makes us become better training dogs in, with competing reinforcers with something the dog says hey i want to do that i'm not going to listen to you and somehow we find a very cool way to convince them to do it our way without being afraid without being suppressed without being stressed that's uh it's mind blowing how that's not interesting to to those people how do you do that what i said before they at the end it's not about protect animals it's about no animals that's the thing and one thing is for sure if they take us the sport and the opportunity to train 
sport, protection sport. Or right. Even hunting, hunting, even any, hunting. Yes. Sled dogs, whatever, the, anything. The, the service dog system in the world will die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. I mean, the police did not invent a new training method. You know, it all came from outside, from the sport right. trainers, from the hunting trainers. There are police officers, canine handlers, which are good trainers, but it, the, the knowledge comes from outside. The dogs come from outside. So if they take us the opportunity to train this dog, then we have to stop all service dogs. Mm -hmm. Not not just protection dog. I mean, like like many departments or organizations use these hunting dogs for just detection work. You know, that's all out of this good training, out yes. of this good genetic level of these dogs. Yes. So, so yes. And, and and that's what what's for sure. There will be never there will be the one without the other. I'm I'm sure we have to to change things because the world changes, but but this must be for sure. Without this, that's not possible. Yes, and, and the the biggest issue with this is that we don't have the honest conversation to find a better ways instead of we are just saying that that's bad that's bad yeah. that's the way that's not how that that will never work that will yeah. never work and and it's difficult i mean it's like open. you and i are in very similar positions in some way like i have i mean i uh, you know i i have that school for dog trainers it, i i feel it's my duty to teach, not to bullshit people, but actually to teach them, hey, there is this way, there is this way. That's better sometimes, that's better sometimes. This you don't do. And yes. these are many reasons why you don't do. And I think in, in, in a lot of ways, me living in the States right now, I still have that freedom to, to do openly things. talk and educate but i'm thinking what happens to somebody like you you have you have new handlers they need to know but now you have to follow certain laws that if you go against that you're actually going against the law and and that's where it becomes very problematic because <coughs> you you are kind of forced to teach something that's not going to work where would we how we, how is it gonna end yeah, I, I mean that's what we talked if if you show me the way poor positive yes i follow why not you know and 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 yeah but i mean this this these are two groups they are so separated that that's that's what i think you know it's it's there is not nothing between it's just right. this or this and it's about the the middle yeah because the middle is yeah. where it's at that's the art of dog training it's not yes. to reject something yes and that's what i think if you prove me that you can do your job in this way just let me do my job in my way right you know and i i make sure that i don't abuse any animals i don't abuse them negative reinforcement is not about abusing a dog right and this changed. I mean, you know, we had these sports many years, and 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 this was totally different forty years, thirty years back. There was animal for abuse, sure, for and sure. that's the beautiful thing of evolution of getting better, yeah. right? Yeah. I I really think we're at the point right now that we can not not everybody, but for sure, a skillful trainer can train a dog through negative reinforcement all the way yeah. and when it's put into some kind of a study you will not be able to tell which one is trained negative or positive reinforcement because I mean take take the electricians yeah. 
you go, you work with fucking electricity. You, you know, you know how not to get hurt, right? And you go and you climb these big high voltage poles and you get big money. You don't every morning before you go to work, you're not cheating yourself. It's like, oh my God, I'm gonna die today. No, I know I need to be careful and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make a big check. Does it matter if a dog is trained poorly positive or there is no poorly negative? Right, 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 exactly right. Or with a little negative, if both dogs feel the same at the end? Yes. I mean, for me, does it matter if I learn it this way or this way? If I'm good in what I do and I like what I do? That's right. Yeah. And that is like when we talk about real science, hundreds of studies done to where the brain doesn't care which way it is. If it's reinforcement, it makes you do something. And it's all rewarding because it's reinforcing. And I don't, it's, a, it's a bad, bad, bad um, agenda, but um, it's picking up speed. So what, how, 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 what, what do you guys think you're gonna, how yeah, you're gonna function now? For me, the old situation, you know, they always say, okay, but your dogs have no choice. You yes. bring him. Yes. I have no choice either. Right. I'm raised and live with negative reinforcement. Yeah. If I don't work, I have no money. Every day. It's negative. Yeah. I don't need to work. I would be happy without work. I'm not I'm not sad because I'm working, but you know. So I have no choice either. No, no, it's it's, 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 it's uh, the reality. The reality is I have no choice. If I want to have a normal <laughs> life, I have to do things I probably don't like so much or less, or sometimes I have to do things I hate. Quite a few European countries, and it's uh, the machine, that ideology, that narrative keeps pushing forward. Yeah. And now, now we are at the point where we are in many countries in Europe, certifying dog trainers. And in order to certify and be allowed, you have to, you have no choice. You have to go with the narrative to say that positive reinforcement is the only way. And in any other science besides dogs, this is laughable. Like any... I think they know, they have to know. Um, but you know how many times I've tried to have one of those scientists that do the those studies and they prove how this works better? <coughs> yep. To have that conversation. Just give me two hours of your time and let me ask you some things. If you, if you make a study, if you feel strongly about something, You gotta be able to answer questions. You gotta be able to defend it. You gotta be able to talk about it. Because oh. I have questions. And it's not just me. We all like to train dogs. We all like to do it better. Show me the better way. Don't tell me that there is a better way, but how do I, how, how, where is it? And that's the cool thing, I think, about dog sports. Because when you, go on the field and no matter how you train, but if you consistently stay on the top of your game, people will be there from all over the world. They will be like, how do you do that? Teach me, show me, teach me, show me, teach me, show me. That's the natural way, right? And Which leads me to another problem in Europe right now. Because, of course, um, yeah, trainers will 
that they are in a very, very hard spot. Because right now, I- in a lot of ways, the positive reinforcement ideology can say, well, look, we ban all these things in Europe and look at the dog sports that you talk about. They still can do it. How do you, what do you say to that? Now that's become tricky because you cannot, you know, say, well, but they still do it, but they don't, uh, you don't know about it. And nobody, yeah, it's a very, very hard situation. Because we cannot, like at some point in time, we're either going to completely lose the battle of training dogs or we're going to have to step up and, and say, hey, this is what we do. Yes. I mean, we did this big mistake when this ban of the e collars came in Germany. Yeah. So sport is one thing, but go back to police. So we had some dogs we trained with e collars some. Not all. Right. And then this ban came. And what did we do? We hide our training. Right. That that's for sure. I mean this is no, no, many years back, but for sure. But that was the big problem that nobody of us because you know, this was my police dog and I don't want to take him out because it's my dog. I like him, he's young, I want to work more years with him. And now from one day to the other took me the opportunity to train like I trained him before. And didn't give you another... Uh, another option. Right. You know, so, I mean, you know exactly when I start, at this time it was legal, when I start training with e collar and I trained several times, I cannot go back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if I would change my whole training, the dog is, is dead. If I train three years and use e collar for several situations, I need three years to retrain him. And this that did not work. And it's, this is what happened. We hide our training. Yeah, in, in some ways. And that was not just in Germany. That was... Everywhere, probably. That was Austria. Yeah. That was Switzerland. Because yes. they were... I mean, they still are way more extreme than Germany. Yes. And, and everybody was like, oh, no, this is just public relations they they make this big noise but we're gonna still be able to do what we do and then it kept creeping more yeah and so so you know there was at at this moment after a few months there was a proof for our administration okay we don't need e-collar mm-hmm. nothing changed right you know that's this was the big lie at this moment i think also and One we did not use e collar for every dog. Of course, of you know course. we we just I can tell you it was me and other people. We just use it to keep these dogs in duty in work. Right. If it was absolutely necessary, so we try. I mean, the whole idea of electric collar or any kind of you must. It's not like you. There is there is moments in time that you need to. No, no, you got to do what I'm asking you to do, even though you think you want to do something else, but you have to. Now, if the whole training is based around this, that's not dog training no more. Yeah. That's like a slave. That, that's just not what we do. Yeah. I think Europe lost because there was no social media at the time that was, it wasn't, it was just starting. It wasn't enough to where no. people can no. voice their opinion. Maybe. No. And now it got to the point that Europe is stuck. There is already laws in place that you cannot say, hey, I do this and this is a bit... Because the moment if you do this now, you're in some way... That's, uh, uh, I mean, it's against the law, so you're becoming a kind of criminal in this way. No. But somehow that conversation needs to happen. And even if we say, okay, no, we ban electric colors. 
all right, what do we do? As you said, do we do with the 45 meter long line all the time? You know, like I went to, um, it was a couple of years ago and I made a video. It was crazy. In, it was, uh, in, I was in Austria. It was a, some world championship. I can't remember. It's irrelevant which one it was. Up in the mountains, just beautiful open space, Austria. Oh. I mean, beautiful. The lows, muzzle, leash, yes. and, and the vaccination record. Oh. And guess what? You actually have cops in the woods controlling dog owners okay. if they have muzzles and leashes on their dogs because oh. it's against the law. Oh. And so your dog, basically, you're telling me that if you live in Austria, the majority of the dogs can never run wild and free and never, never be a dog in this no. beautiful open space. That's what I think. They don't want a dog to be a dog. They want no dogs. That's right. the, the, the thing about it. It's, uh, it's complicated. I don't know. I think for, tru for sure in Germany there must, there's a must of a conversation now. Yes. There's and it's also, I think, okay, it's separate police and sport. It's different topics. It first. should be. And I think it's important that our main club, the VDH, stands up and say, okay, listen, this and this is what we're doing in this and this way. And, you know, we have an animal abuse or an animal protection law since, I don't know, 40 years. Yes. And since 25 years, it's forbidden to abuse a dog. So Thank God, right? Yes. So there would, you know, there, there is no need. I mean, if I, if, if anybody abuses dog, I kick his ass. Right. Right. That's, you know, that's normal. That's nothing to do. And, but now I think it's the time to, we will see if, if we can, change to be honest the pinch i mean if they make an exception for whatever i would not need a pinch i would be happy if they give me the e-collar back right you know ultimately and and it's in in germany f when you so what i talked said before the there is the animal protective law and the bylaw is now with the pinch in the animal protection law there is a sentence there's a chance that that each state can decide about an exception of the e-collar. Nobody used it until now. So if I'm not in the position, you know, I'm... Right. But if I try to influence the people over me, and that if we make an exception for whatever, give us e-collar back. But see how it, it's all these local fights and wins and losses instead of just ultimately we all should use everybody's knowledge and, and get better and be honest and do the right thing for the dogs and for the people that yeah. own dogs. But, you know, the problem is the VDH has not the power, I think. The power now in Germany is with the police to go in this direction. The VDH has a problem, just like uh, all the all the organizations in Europe they don't and care. the FCI working dog yeah. commission. They they will bend over anything as long as they can keep their positions. And they and don't this care is about sad. protection sports. Of course sports. not. It's just a, of course for not. them. It's protection sport is just a pain in the ass. At the end, you know, it's just you know, I don't know, one percent of all the the, the 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 members of the FCI is is a, a working Very dog part. So they don't care so much. So it for me then. It's and the even if they, mm, I mean, some of them care, but when they have to 
weigh the pros and cons of do I have my little cool job as that person or do I fight for the rights for the whole community? No, I keep my job. Yes. Nature, human yes, nature. nature. But it, it's all the, yeah, I, I'm probably, I don't know, I may be out of my mind, but I would be like, hey, people, the, we, we have selected those people to be the working dog commission of FCI. This means more than half of the world of working dogs. They are elected to educate and protect the rights of us, the dog trainers. And that's the last thing they do. Yes. The last thing yeah. they do. It's a sh it's yeah, I mean, if you think about do this and I risk my job or I have trouble for two years and you, you know, maybe you act the same at the end, I don't know. And the crazy thing, the moment, the very moment something real happens, uh, yeah. hey, we need real dogs, we need real training. All of a sudden, the homeopathy things are not working and you're going to the real doctor and you're like what do we need to do <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, but it's a it's a kind of sucks that we should be hoping for something really bad to happen to where we say hey we we need to train the dogs yeah. but it's yeah it will become difficult just this morning i read an article on, in the German newspaper about this thing because it's big in the newspaper. Oh yeah, I mean right now it's in, like a sensation. And okay, like okay, so this thing came out June, then I don't know end of November. It was clear. Okay, there is nothing to change anymore. Until this point, we thought okay, this will not come out, and then we have this. 16 states in our country and so all the chiefs of the police dog school which is which is the highest institution in this in this canine things mm -hmm. they have so they meet usually once a year and so they, they are in contact and so they made a zoom conference zoom meeting and they talked about this and they said yes we have to take Talk with one voice. Yes, all is good. And I know exactly what happened. Because we have some states, since years, they say, okay, we are the poor positive police dog trainers. And mm -hmm. I know exactly what happens. I know exactly, like the one state, that the police dogs, they have to come for to certification to the school, if they come come to school and the trainer see oh not so easy, they send this guy back and he makes certification back at home. Right. And you know exactly what happens. And now I, I just read about in this newspaper, these two or three states I was thinking about, they make just keep distance now from this. Ah, we, we did this poor positive since two or three years. And it's a poor lie. Right. Right. They do it official. It's a poor lie, you know. But that's that's kind of what's accepted. That's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, there was a, you know, like in England, the guy, he, he passed away, John Fisher. I don't know if you know. He's like a, a British force free at the, like, l early 90s. And oh. he was like, oh, we can train a dog all positive. It's like we, we, everybody that has trained dogs long enough, we all can agree that we can train a dog with all positive. But we cannot argue that there is limitations how far you go with that. He even wrote a book. He convinced some guy in the uh, London, I think it was police, and they trained the dog, and it was all recorded, positive. Oh. 
and he passed All the, the police test. Okay, I mean, it's okay, great. The problem is nobody else wanted to do it. Uh. And that tells you, you know, like that tells you right away. Just like I, I keep saying this thing with, uh, you know, we all had these flip phones uh. at one time, but yes. nobody had to force you yes. to upgrade to a smartphone. Yeah, but we have, right? Because it's better. <laughs> And, and anytime something is better, you don't need to pass a law to ban something else. Yes. Everybody's going to jump yes, on it. Sure. Just show me the way and we all going to go. <coughs> I mean, we jumped on the more positive training. Everybody did. I mean, it was a, it yeah. was a cool thing and yes. we actually oh. all got better. Yes, for sure. We got better. But w with England, it's funny. I, you know Thomas Baumann? Do you know this? name did you ever um no i don't think so so he was a canine handler in my state where <laughs> i work and then when the border opened we had this program so he went over to the east part of germany and he got higher rank and he was i think he was chief of the dog training school in this state and then he was in the ministry he was He made his career and then he stopped with police mm -hmm. and now he's a trainer. And he writes books. He wrote many years ago, write a book about police dog training and now he writes books about behavior stuff. And I mean, it's not, I don't, it's not, a, you know, the typical pet dog trainer. He also trains, you know, dogs with, with um, behavior. Yeah, things, some you know. some problems, some some, and all his mainly positive. You know, that's 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 the the job like we do all. And he right now he, about England, and he said he was in in the commission, in the Paul Commission f for Germany for this K9 stuff, mm -hmm. and this was 20 years ago. And he and he talked about England police talks. And said, yeah, they are. Trained poorly positive and and he said in in this in this was in Facebook he said yeah the dogs passed the test but you know in all the dogs there was a lack of desire to buy it a lack of the you know right. so he said for sure they passed the test no? and he he wrote it really nice you know it was really good he said nice things. And now in this art article I read in the morning, they took him and said, yes, Thomas Baumann, which is a well-known expert, he said, the poorly positive dogs in Works. England train passed the test. Yes. That's, that's the cherry picking of, yes. of, yes, yes, of course. Do you know, you know Victoria Steelwell, right? Yes. The, the yes. British, the... the, the uh. And she has a school now and everything. And I wish I can talk to her. I mean, but she did a, a season on TV with police dogs. Do you no. know that one? No, no, no. Yes, purely positive. And they trained and they made the show and they have everything, right? That's where it ended. That's where it ended. Yes, I mean. Now, if you are actually good at something, and especially if you, even if you go on TV and you say, hey, we're training police dogs, I can do it better than you. Imagine all police departments will be, show us, please, yes, teach yes. me. Yes, show me the easy way I follow. But that didn't happen. And if you go to her websites or anywhere in her advertisements and schools, it's like, yeah, the positive and against shock callers and all this, which is all fine. And I trained the police dogs or whatever city and, and it was beautiful. And we were so successful. No, you were not so successful. Successful means 
that everybody throws their flip phones and everybody from tomorrow, yeah. not a week, but from tomorrow has Switch smartphones. Yeah. Very easy. Yeah. And you don't need to force nobody. Yeah. Never happened. But somehow they are masters in having that conversation is kind of like it's almost like the matrix the blue and the red pill it's like are you a good person or a bad person are you gonna inflict pain or are you gonna give a treat so of course you're gonna give a treat everybody will choose the treat yes. god damn it's such a but it doesn't help like if those people really want to help those they at least have to understand that it's we are we are programmed to once again it's like we avoid something that we don't like and there is a big use of that in important in in training in touching in society in everything i mean we wouldn't ha- like you will be out of your job if positive reinforcement worked yes. that's how simple it is yep. you you would not have a job as a police officer Uh, there will be no, no jails no there jails, will be no uh, right like we we will manage society in a very different way and that's proven not to work so why not try to find and i'm again there's just horrible things and you've seen them and i've seen them people do bad things but people do bad things yes. no matter what you try to do they will do bad things some people i i wish one day we we have these conversations and i hope this kind of podcast and talking everywhere around the world that we you know we we want to train dogs we like to train dogs and the cool thing is dogs like to be What trained do do? yes That, that's their life and it's not that we manipulate them in some weird no, ways and they have other choices like i in my school like we have videos i have like ice my dog that i compete with he breeds a female the day before then the next day i bring him on the field and he sees the same female and he has no shock collar no prong collar nothing and i say dude what do you want to do you want to breed and he's a i mean it's not his first time that he's bred yes. it's like a stud dog he's six years old he's bred plenty there is a female in standing here that he bred the day before he has no nothing that can force him i'm like you want to stay with her or you want to go on the field to play and train and he comes with me yes yes and then we're done with training he rests and he goes and he breathes that's something to be you know to like if i am a scientist i will be like okay what are you guys doing how do you get this kind of relationship because it's clearly you're not forcing him to do that he wants it and he wants it more than his biological need yes. to reproduce which is the most why don't we not share that knowledge why don't we get better that way right i think it's too too divided that's what i think that's people that's that's where we are i mean and we're talking dogs but the whole world is uh, who knows meta universe now the kids will not train dogs no more they'll be probably not <laughs> but but at least i don't know so i think we did a long long talk yes and i'm super happy and thank you for yes. for that like i as i said it's been a dream of mine to do this podcast with you <laughs> because we always have these conversations and, yeah. and it's, it's very cool so um yeah i'm gonna list everything um you know credentials and ways to contact you people i'm sure will be very interested yep. for for many reasons being police being 
training being, judging being, like, I mean, it's such a, I mean, there is like a total package, you <laughs> yes, know? Yes. So very, very much appreciated. Uh, thank you for joining me to this conversation. Thank you. All right, Marcos. Take care, guys. Yep.